Okay, so I'm going to show you using the mold. Now, you'll notice I've already got some body parts in it because I was playing with it this afternoon. So I thought I would just, because I didn't know how warm it was going to be, whether any of these things were going to set or not set. So I thought I'd just put some in and see how we got on. So I've got one that's a little bit firmer and on a wire. We've got one still in the mold and I will re-put everything back in these mold guys so you can see sort of from start to finish but it was just in case it was so warm that we couldn't really do anything that I wanted to just pop some in there in advance especially because when I when I do make them normally what I would do is leave them in here for a little while and now it depends what paste you use as well guys so I'm going to use the serotonin so let me just show you this um, I think most of you guys that watch regularly will see me use this a lot so this is pre-made modeling paste. I tend to use it pre-coloured um, because you can obviously colour it yourself. Now there's a range of like different um, skin tones like there's a sugar flare, it's called something else is it? Oh what's that? Honey gold, called? pink honey. Pink honey maybe for a pale skin tone and then um, fractal do a range. So these are all gel colours these ones guys. So there's more in the range than what I've just pulled out here for skin tones. Um, a lot of you guys have been buying these, it's been proven to be very popular. We used, was it Rosy Pale? We used in the Color Pudge class when Carla came um, for a paler skin tone. That one was quite nice as well, but there is like a much bigger range than what I've got here. Now, I've got them out just because I want to show you guys that you can obviously use these in your modeling paste. That's absolutely fine. And they mix fine into white Saracino if you are using the Saracino guys. But bear in mind, the more you're mixing things into it, the softer it's going to get. So this has got cocoa butter in, which is quite heat sensitive, which is why I struggled a lot today with it. So if you've got very hot hands, the more you're kneading it, the softer it's going to be. Sometimes it can be too soft to work with. So you have to kind of put it back down, let it go back to room temperature. You can even put it in the fridge for five minutes if you want, but don't put it in the fridge for too long. Otherwise it'll get condensation on and then it go back to being sticky. Um, I tend to use the brown and the, what's this one called now, this colour? Rose beige, I believe. Oh yeah, rose beige. And what I'll often do is mix these two together to get different sort of skin shades. But whichever one you prefer. So I'm not going to mix these in because it's going to make my paste very soft today. But it doesn't mean that you guys can't, just don't rush to make uh, whatever it is you're making. I'll put the paste in your mould once you've used those. Okay, I was going to tell you something else about the colours, but I've forgotten what it was. I had a couple of people asking, do you add Tylo to your... Yes, so today I there? did. So I've got some on hand, um, because when it is warm, we're going to have to add to it. Oh, I, was, I know what I was starting to tell you guys about. It was, um, I don't know how many of you guys use a lot of different modelling paste. Also, I apologise, you can probably hear the aeroplane going over. So it's really warm, so that all the doors and windows are open at home, uh, which probably means you'll see some flies flying past, because as soon as they open a window, all the flies want to come in. Um, but yeah, we're under the flight path as well, so you probably hear the uh, plane going over a few times, I would think, anyway. Um, yeah, so the different pastes, I don't make my own. I know people often will message and say, can I have a recipe for a good gum paste, a good modeling paste? I don't make my own. Um, I think there's plenty of good recipes online, but you're probably best Googling and, and trying them out. I wouldn't be able to tell you which ones are good and not good because I'm way too lazy to make it myself. So apologies guys, I just get it ready made because it's a big time saver for me and I, I use a lot of it. Um, and this particular one, the Salicino, because of the cocoa butter, it's really nice to use. I used to use a lot of the Ventures Flower Modeling Paste, which again is nice. Um, it takes longer to dry, but when it has dried, it sets hard like pot. However, when I use that one in my molds, it's difficult to leave it a little while and then pull it out because what happens is with the some of the other modeling pastes and it might be the same for different brands as well and it doesn't mean that they're no good it's just that you have to maybe get your timings um sort of slightly different from what i might do when i'm using the saracino paste so a lot of the others what they'll do is they'll stay softer for longer in the middle of the paste so if we we're making like a leg it stays softer in the middle but it would start to dry on the outside much quicker so when we try and bend it or move it, it's going to crack or wrinkle a lot. I mean, it doesn't mean that my Saratino won't do that. It might if I let it dry too hard or sometimes if it gets really warm, it kind of goes a bit wrinkly on the surface. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to tell you guys that there is differences that, you know, you, you the speed you're going to work at will be different depending on what type of paste you use. And I'm sorry to all of you guys that have heard me say that lots of times before. I know that it's just something we get questions about a lot. 
Um, and it's really difficult for me to know, unless I've used that particular pace that you're using, how it's going to um, react, if that makes sense. I'm rambling now, so I'll, I'll move on, guys. Quick question yes. we had. Does Saracena contain nuts? Uh, I've had a quick look at the packet. Um, I, it says it may contain nuts and peanuts, but I think that's because it's made in the factory. It may fact. contain eggs, peanuts, soybeans, almonds, hazelnuts, pistachio nuts. Uh, so in there, I presume it's all in the same factory. So they do food flavorings as well. And in the food flavorings, they do like peanut flavor, food, fl uh, food flavor, and pistachio ones. So they, I think they would do probably have nuts. Yeah, definitely in their factories, which is why it will say may contain yeah. nuts. Uh, which ones don't? There are some that say that don't. But I can't remember which they are. I mean, if you really struggle, you could use a fondant with CMC or Talus. I apologize, I went to your Um But I I can't get on very well with that. My nose is really itchy. Sorry, Sorry. guys. Um, yeah, I can't get on with that very well. I don't really like to put CMC in my modeling paste unless like, I can help it because it obviously takes a little while to set and I get a bit impatient and I pour like, loads of the stuff in and I think, you know, it's not much harder, it's not much harder. And then um, sort of half an hour later when I'm trying to move things around I've put too much in and I'm struggling to kind of re-roll it into a ball you might see that later with the paste that I mixed earlier um, I put some CMC in earlier in some of it so that might be harder for me to work with now than it was earlier um, but yeah it was so warm that I had no option really other than to add it earlier on okay so I know quite a few of you guys had questions about using the moulds Oh, and by the way, everybody's work that I've seen using them is, is actually really good. Some of the little creations you guys have been doing have been fantastic. I do like to see all the pictures, guys. Um, okay, so I feel like I'm kind of doing it in a wrong way around order because I've used, um, I've kind of got some things in there already. Oh, okay, so let's start with that. Something that people ask me a lot is, has the face um, pushed out right or not? And what I did is, I don't know if you guys can see that here. Do you want top down or uh, bear with me a second? Can you see that on the top camera? Um, yeah. I've just pushed like a, a pea sized piece of paste into the nose and mouth area to show you what it actually should look like because it is small, so it's meant to be very small on this one. The nose barely sticks out. Can you see that? Am I holding yeah, it? Yeah, hold it. yeah, that's a it. Bit that's, yeah, that's good. That's perfect. Okay, so mouth and nose are fairly small on this one. So they're never going to stick out a lot in this particular mould. Okay, but let me just see if I can put some paste in and show you guys again. I apologize, my nose is really tickling. I suffer um, from hay fever and um, it's been bad the past few days. I've taken a tablet for it, but my nose feels like it's tickling and I might sneeze. Okay, so I haven't done this properly, but quite often I think people push it in and either don't push it in very well or they press on this side of the mould and what happens is when they take it out there's barely any imprint on this side usually a bit more than what I've done there but so even with a bit of force if you catch this side and this isn't really the way you pull it out I'm just showing you quickly I'm not going to get this one out now am I? <laughs> um, I'll show you again it probably happened by accident anyway um, like there's barely anything there there's, I mean there shouldn't be much there anyway but there should be a little bit more definition than what there is on that one okay so with your mold so it comes with a face and it comes with legs arms and torso i realized you know it should be different colored body parts that's fine she won't have by the time we're finished um but yeah there is um an amount of weight that i've put on it's now on the website as well so on the product description we've put on emily's very kindly put on the amount of weights of paste that fit in each of these parts so that will help you a little bit. It's also in the YouTube videos as well. The ones we've got on there do have uh, quantities. Obviously it will change in the head depending on if you're gonna add a polystyrene ball on it. So I'll show you the two ways I tend to, to do it. So this is firm but quite a bit. This one has actually got Tylos in. So sometimes I'll start with way more paste than I need. Just to say we've got viewers from all over the world tonight. Oh, thank you for joining us everyone. Especially like if it's a really funny time of day or night. That's no, great. Got a few from the UK as well. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> okay, so we'll just give it a need. And because it's warm, like it feels pretty firm in the bag. Like I say, I have put um, CMC or Talos in it. I actually chipped in quite a lot. I'll show you the amount I put in. I don't want to put any more in because I know it's got a lot. Um, usually, what I do is I just kind of put it on my knife and I kind of put like, that kind of amount in. 
Can you guys see yeah, it? that's I good. Camera I'm on, so I don't You're on top of that at the moment, that's fine. Oh, okay, they can see it better from the side just because it's piled high. So normally you probably would have put as much as that in quite a small piece of paste, um, but my paste was so just warm earlier. But yeah, put loads in. But remember, if you do put a lot in later on, it's going to be pretty firm and, and hard to work with. But the heat from my hands will soften it again and probably to the point where it's going to be a bit too soft. But we will manage. You can put these in the fridge for 5-10 minutes or the freezer for 5 minutes, but don't leave them in there for too long. You can, if you find that things are getting stuck, you can either put a little bit of shortening in with your finger very carefully. I'm not so good with the shortening because what happens is I get it all stuck in the nose, so the shortening completely fills like the nose and mouth. And then when I put the paste in and I pull it out, the nose and mouth is just shortening. So of course when you wipe the shortening off, there's no nose and mouth. So I prefer corn flour. So we just dust that in there. So I'm just using my little corn flour pouch. And then I'll just kind of knock it around and then tap out any extra. If you want, you can use a brush. So where all my brushes go? You can get some corn flour on your brush and just rub that. And then you, you know you've got it right into the nose and the mouth. Um, I was using this one earlier for blue, so I'm not gonna rub it in my mold because the color will come off this brush that I've been using into the mold and it will stay on the face. Which if you want that, that's fine. Okay, so I haven't weighed how much I've got here, but the, the head itself, um, I usually put about 16 grams of paste in. So I know I've got more here. Do you want me to measure it so you can see how much? But like I said, this isn't an accurate amount. This is, this is when I'm in a rush, I put loads in. And it was Richard that actually used to do it this way. And I was like, Richard, that looks ridiculous. It's never gonna work, but actually, Turns out it did. So I've got over 30 grams, just over 30 grams. Did you say you listened to me? Yeah. Ooh. Okay, so I'm going to try and squeeze it. So we've got like a nice smooth bit on one side. Like try not have any creases and cracks in this side because that's going to be the front of our face. And I'm going to try and squeeze it so it's just a little bit smaller than the mould. It's not smaller than the mould yet. Okay. And then I'm going to put it into my mould. Can you see it? I don't know which angle we're at. Which You're top down at the moment. Okay, so we're going to push that in. It's going to have to be pushed firmly in, but not just by this back bit, but I'm actually going to have to push my finger right in to like the nose and the mouth area. Now, usually I think I've pushed that really hard, you know, that the nose and the mouth is going to definitely come out. I've pressed that in so hard in that middle bit, there's no way that it's not going to come out and then pull it out and it hasn't. Sometimes I press so hard with my finger, but my finger's a bit sticky, that when I lift my finger up, this comes out with it a little bit. And then as it sort of pushes itself back down again, as it unsticks from my finger and drops back down, it drops in a slightly different place in the mold and I have like a double face imprint. Um, it's not the end of the world if it goes wrong, because it only takes a minute or two to redo it, guys. Okay. So remember, we're not gonna press on this side. I've got all this extra paste, if it's too soft, just put it down and leave it for five minutes, okay? It's fairly soft, but I think it's, I think maybe it was gonna work, we'll see. So I've got all this spare paste, let's just pull. Okay, so I pull that out fairly quickly. She looks all right, I think. Sometimes I lose a tiny bit of definition on like the edge of an eye or the lip, but I think that's fine. Can you guys all see that? Okay, so what I do now is I just cut all this spare paste off the back. She's very soft. So if you cut it off straight away, just be mindful that you could squash the face to be thinner. I'm gonna do it anyway, but. <laughs> let's, let's move the face a little bit. So if her face is squashed too much, what you're gonna do is just gently, gently on the forehead and the eye area, and it just will sort of fill the face back out again. Okay. So you're so hardy that you're fairly happy with that. So that's, that's usually the way I end up doing it. I do end up with a flat head at the back, for me, most of the time it's fine because a lot of my female figures have got hair, so I can bulk it out with hair afterwards. I know that, you know, it's not always the case on every figure, like sometimes they want to have a bald head. So the other option, there we go, put it down, I've forgotten where I've put it, is if we put some fire in there again, just to make sure it's not going to stick on quite to my other colour, should we do the pale colour face? The pale skin colour is a little bit softer, so we'll see if it works. This one I added even more Tylos Tough. Um, I tend to find that the 
So this is the pre-coloured stuff that comes. I lost the packet. Where did I put the packet? The pre-coloured. Oh. Um, I tend to use it not in the two fifty gram packs, but the kilogram. I think next door is doing some DIY again. He's been doing DIY all week. I don't know what he's making. Um, yes, you might hear that, guys. <laughs> yeah. I completely lost track of what I'm doing. You're saying that you, you normally use it in kilo tubs. Yes, it comes in kilo tubs as well. So it does last a long time, guys. A lot of people say to me, well, how long does it last? It lasts till at least the date on the pack, which is usually a good year or so away. Now, I'll be honest, sometimes I've used it that's past the date on the back. If I'm just making it for like classes or whatever, no one's going to eat them um, because it still is all right. Sometimes it starts to get a little bit drier, so I just have to knead it for a little bit longer than what I would normally. And I realize you guys haven't actually seen what this paste looks like, have you? When I'm going to show you in a minute. Right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in here. So this one's got Tylo, so CMC in. But this, the pale skin color one, what did we say it's called now? Rose beige. Rose beige. Um, it's quite soft. It is quite soft as this one. So, you know, you can find um, it might not offer as much support as if you're using a different colour, pre-coloured one. Can I throw you a question? Yes, you can throw me a question. Joanne would like to know, do you have bigger size moulds or only that one size you're using? Um, so I have, yeah, where have I put them? So like I say, these are, I didn't even worry about getting them out of the mould properly, these ones. Um, but the only one I've got a body for at the moment is this small one, Jenna. But we can also, we also live right next to the main road. So you hear the sirens going past as well. Um, what did I call this one? Did I call this one without Abby, Abby? Abby, yeah. And this one I'm calling Becca. Okay. So you can see the size different. I think you can. Can you see this far over on my board, Richard? Yeah, you can do, yeah. Okay, so this one with the eyes. This one's actually my, fav oops, my favorite one, but I, I like them a bit bigger because they're it's easier to work on a face that is bigger, but obviously, you, you know, they're going to have to have a bigger body. So sometimes it's a bit too big for some of your cakes. Depends what cake you're doing. Uh, this one is a little bit smaller and it doesn't have eyes. The advantage of this one is you can change what the character looks like a lot more because there's no eyes set in there and you can completely change them to whatever you want. I'll show you on this one actually that you can still change the eyes a little bit though, even with eye imprints. So then the Gemma one is the smallest one. That's my favorite, that one there. There's also male faces as well. I'll, show, I'll, show, I'll do a video where I'll show you all of them together. We'll get them out guys. toward the end as well. Um, but yeah, so at the moment, I'm halfway through making some bodies for these two. Uh, but yeah, this general one's the only one with a body at the moment. And the men's mold, so the males are now getting uh, bodies. I have sat and made them. I'm just waiting for the molds to come now. Okay. So I'm gonna weigh this one, guys. Can you guys remember how much I said was in the head? Which has put his hand up. 16 grams. 16 grams. It's about 16. Mm. Okay, so I'm just putting it, I don't think you can see it on me. I'm just putting my paste and not using no way in a bag because I don't want it to dry out. It's, if you left it out for sort of 15 minutes, it's on the side, don't worry, it should still be all right, but always best to wrap it up if you can. Okay, so again, we'll do a bit more kneading. It's harder to knead when it's got the CMC, and I always find that once I have added CMC or Tylos, it's harder to get rid of creases and cracks. I might pull out some um, skin tone that hasn't got it added, so you, just so you guys can, a pale skin tone, um, so that you guys can see the difference. Okay, <coughs> so just try and roll it so you've got a bit that's got no creases and cracks, and I apologize, the dog is definitely snoring now. And we're gonna push this into the mold. So press it really firmly into the mold okay so you'll see this amount gives you more than you need which means you can have it so you get a lump at the back a lump very technical i don't worry if i've got creases and cracks in the back of the head because again i'm usually going to cover it with hair but if you want to spend longer smoothing that down i don't think that crease will actually come out because of the cmc that's in it it just makes it so much harder to get rid of creases and cracks um, yeah, so we can keep it like that. The alternative, we can let this set for sort of 10 minutes or so and we can pull it out with cocktail sticks. The alternative is we take a little bit of this paste off and we put a polystyrene ball in. And again, it just keeps the rounded bit at the back, but it also keeps it slightly lighter weight. And these are only small heads, so they're not overly heavy. It's not the end of the world. But if you were going for like one of the bigger ones, if you've got polystyrene ball in the back of that head, it's just going to make it a little bit easier. These ones are around polymer clay, just for me. So that all in the back as well. Uh, these were just for me playing around. 
so that's why they look nice. Okay, so I'm just looking. I did have another gem with face mold. Okay, so let's leave that one without the polystyrene ball. We'll just do another one with the polystyrene ball. Like I said, I don't know if I have pressed into that nose and mouth area or not correctly. I will never know until I take it out, guys. You know, sometimes it works for me, sometimes I haven't pressed it in properly. So if I'm going to add a polystyrene ball, I'm probably not going to need the full 16 grams. But if I've got too much, it's fine. I can cut it off. So let's need this. So this is just, I've got more than one gem ahead on the go. So that, so that I could leave one in the light set and show you guys on another one. Now the other option as well is guys, if you struggle to get the cornflower in the mold, you can always lightly rub a little bit of it onto the surface of the paste that you're going to push in. How about like a ridiculous amount on just a little bit? And then we're going to push that into the mold. Again, remember pressing really firmly with your fingers. If your fingers are sticking to it, put some cornflour on your fingers and then press in. Then we're going to take a bowl. So a two centimeter one should be okay, I think. And I'm just going to put a little bit of water on the bowl. You can use edible glue. And then push that in as far as I can. And then I'm going to wrap this around the back of it. Now it's a bit sticky because I put water on the bowl. Now it makes it quite a lot bigger. Can you see the back of the head? So if you've got too much paste, just cut a little bit off. Also hard to cut now it's got the time I've seen. So I wet the bowl just a little bit too much, which is making a bit of a messy job of it. But it'll be fine. Okay, so you can have wrinkles in the back of a head, that's fine. Like I say, we can, we're going to give these hair, so I'm not too worried. Now, also the polystyrene ball, when I, if I get it out a different way to the last one, so the last one you saw I just pulled out. With these ones, what I can do is I can put a stick in and pull them out. But what you have to be careful of is the head twisting. So sometimes if I put a single stick in and then pull it out, the head can kind of twist as it's coming out and then the face kind of squashes on the side of the mold. So if I put two sticks in, there's less chance of it spinning. But these have only just gone in. So if I put a stick in now and pull, what's gonna happen is the polystyrene ball will cling to my stick really well, but it might not necessarily cling to that paste and it might rip out and just leave the paste in the front of the face and we get like the back of the head of the polystyrene. Same for this one at the moment, it's still a little bit on the soft side so if I put my sticks in and pull, these could just tear straight out. So let's give these five minutes in the fridge. I'm going to ask Richard to go put these in the fridge. Like I said, don't, don't ever forget them guys actually uh, because I am likely to forget them. Once I left one in over and I completely forgot about it and of course as I'm pulling it out, the condensation was just made the face so wet and sweaty it was horrible and I couldn't decorate it and do anything with it because it was just so wet and it just got so cold that obviously when you bring it out of the fridge and it comes back to normal temperature it causes condensation so Richard yep I'm going to say I've got a few questions for you so I'll let you answer these yep. um, can you use gum paste and is Saracino available in the UK yes we sell Saracino here in the UK yeah and will you be bringing in any males out yes no, yes yes so I yeah, I think you guys maybe just missed the beginning bit, but that's fine. Um, so ages ago I did actually make the male bodies and I broke them when it was supposed to be made the same time as the other female body. Um, and I, I broke it before it got made into a mold and I was in a rush for them doing and the company was like, if you want them making it into molds, you just send them now. So we just got the female one done and I've just remade the male ones now. So I've made guys. So at the moment we only have the one female one for the small head, the general one. So I've made two more female bodies, which will fit with the other female heads. And then I've made male bodies and they're in the three sizes. So there'll be one that matches with the size of the general one, the existing female. One that matches with the medium sized guys, which you can use it to a few different heads, which kind of goes with this female. That's, what did I call this one? Becca. Becca, yeah. I haven't actually been on the website yet. So <laughs> right here on the website. And then um, a bigger male body, which I've actually done a new male head as well. It's even bigger. Um, just So the Johnny head, I really wish I'd called it something different. I called it Johnny after Johnny Bravo. Well, I wish I'd not called it that. The, yeah, the head that I've called Johnny is supposed to fit her, but he is 
he's maybe a tiny bit smaller than her, so I've just done another male face that fits a bit better with this largest of the faces, of the female faces. So yeah, male body, I'm, they made that really long winded, didn't that guys? Male bodies are coming. Uh, they are, they are, I've made the bodies, it's now just getting them turned into moulds. Uh, which can sometimes take a little bit of time. Just talking about modelling page, because a few people have never used it, a few people don't have access to it. I so, didn't answer the questions either, do yeah. All right. What other sort of pastes could, could you use? I mean, a few people have mentioned Renshaw flower and modelling. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, modeling well, like, so this is a modelling paste. Gum paste, flower paste are all different kind of types of modelling paste. It's just different brands have slightly different things in which make them, which gives them all different qualities. So, for example, this one's got the cocoa butter in, which means it doesn't set so quickly that you've got to work with it within seconds so yeah depending what i'm making sometimes depends what i switch to using but most of the time i tend to stick to the serotina so it is available in the uk uh we set so we anybody that's new to our facebook lives i haven't done one for a long time but we have um, an online shop so we sell all the cake decorating supplies most of the stuff i use we do sell in our store i, I sometimes might use something that we don't sell but it's not overly often because i know that you guys want to know where i get it from so i've got a lot of products that i have that i don't actually use anymore because they either don't make them anymore or i can't get hold of them anymore and then when you guys want to know where they're from i'm like oh, i don't think they make them anymore so i try and use things that we've got um so yeah we we do sell that um you can use other gum paste and flower pastes if you missed the beginning of the video actually guys because i know i talked quite a bit about it at the beginning um i don't know if many people were with us at the beginning or not though uh, you can watch it back obviously when this live's finished go back and watch the beginning um, just because you'll be able to listen to me talk a bit more about the modeling paste so you can use different brands you can make it own it's just bear in mind because there are you know they have different benefits uh, to each one it might be that you have to use it quicker or you have to leave it longer to dry it, it really depends which brand which type or if it's homemade yeah like I say, I went through that at the beginning, so feel free to, to listen to that bit <laughs> when this is finished. Yeah, was there more questions, Richard? Or? Uh, now, Edwina's, had a, yes. Edwina's mentioned a good point. Um, obviously, if you haven't got any seams here, Tylos, you can mix a couple of pastes together. She added a bit of like Squire's Kitchen flour paste for a wrench to yeah, a Saracino. Yeah, flour paste and that is helped. really yeah. hard, yeah. Yeah, because that's not as, the, a lot of the flour paste pastes don't have cocoa butter, so they're not as heat sensitive as like this one is, so that's a good idea, Edwina. Uh, also, you know, if you're really struggling in the heat, put, like Richard went and got me the fan from work and it did cool down my workspace straight away, like just having the fan on what I was doing made a difference, like my hands were as hot, so when I got unbearably hot hands, it, it makes it really difficult to, to work. Should we get on with some more? Although overnight, mate? wait overnight and do it overnight when it's cooler. Yes. Okay, so. So guys, there's all different ways of getting your bodies out of the mould. I think I've got this cocktail stick stuck. So, you can see, this body here, I've used a cocktail stick to get out of the mould. And this leg, I used a wire. Sometimes it works perfect for me, like these come out no problem. Sometimes I push it in at the wrong angle and I ruin my leg because, you know, it's got a stick coming out like the calf or the shin. So, I am going to put these back in. Um, and redo new ones for you, but it's just so you guys can see the body. You don't have to keep the cocktail stick in it as well. Just open it a little bit, just check it's not stuck. I did make this one this afternoon, so it has started to firm up, but I will do another one that's fresh as well. And a cocktail stick was ideal because it's thin enough that it fits in the neck and it's quite rigid. So this one's a bit chunkier than the leg. I can put a wire through that. I can't cut a cocktail stick in, but it only goes so far down. The wooden skewer is probably a little bit too big because it's almost the same size as like the ankle, meaning it's probably going to split the paste at that side. Almost the same size as the neck, meaning again, if I use a big skewer, it's probably going to crack open that neck. So we'll go for something smaller. Like I say, you could use a wire, but the paste is fairly chunky and sometimes if I use a thin wire and there's a big amount of paste, when I pull the wire out, because it's only thin, it can just split through, leaving the paste still in there with a big like line and mess over it. So I'm gonna use the cocktail stick. You know, if you wanna try with the wire or something else, absolutely fine. Can you see there's a little slit in the mold, guys? Okay, and that's so that you can push something in that slit. So I'm gonna go to like the edge of it 
and I'm going to push this in. What I want you to watch out for is that you're not pushing in at like an angle like that because it's going to come out the tummy. So try and keep it fairly straight. And we're going to push. Now on this one, I'm not even worried about going all the way to the bottom. It's just really to help me get it out. So I'll just try and hold it open a tiny bit. They're fairly rigid in the mould, so you'll only be able to hold them open so much. Okay. And I can see now I pulled it out. Look, I had a crease in my paste there. They're not abs. Yeah, I really want to keep it abs. Usually I would let it dry before I do this. I mean, if I was really, if it was really bad and I was like, oh no, that's awful, there's no fixing it, then I would just take it out and remake it anyway. But what you can sometimes do is if you take a tiny bit of paste and some water, where's my paintbrush gone? There we go. So we'll take a tiny bit of water, guys. A little bit of water in there. Good. And a tiny bit of the same skin color. This might even be too much skin color that I've got here. Because it's only a little, little bit that we need to fill. I've just been reminded by about the fridge. Oh yeah, has it been in five minutes yet? And then Matthew is quite, he's on the ball. He is. Okay, I guess I put a little bit of water on top of that and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of push that in. And you can use different tools for this guys, so you can use like a rubber ended tool. Again guys, we do have these on the website. I forgot what these ones are called. I'll get Emily to put links in. Oh, sorry, whoever asked for the Saracino, what I'll do is I'll get Emily to put links in for the Saracino as well. Emily has been popping links as we oh, can. Yeah. So can you see, that's kind of gone over that. Sometimes if I've not got it quite smooth enough, I'll just run my slightly damp brush just over it and then like my finger. And then just don't sort of touch it too much then because it'll be sticky. Uh, the other tool you can use is like the cat tongue tool. It's maybe a bit big for this bit here. I've got some paste stuck to my captain tool from earlier. Just make sure if you're using a tool that you've cleaned it. Actually, the smaller one. This so this actually is, we've got these fairly newly in, but these are really nice for smoothing things or filling it in. I just want that small one out there. Come out, small one. Um, but yeah. The hair on me, sorry guys. They're really good for just smoothing over things, especially if you take the small one like these little bodies and things where you're going to struggle a bit more, especially if you've got bigger fingers, um, to get in there. And because of the flex, they don't sort of leave too harsh a marks. But can you guys see that I filled in that little crack that was there? It just saves me having to, oh, she's got a little one on her neck there, but I'm going to leave it. But it just saves me having to remake it. But if you think, actually, it didn't take me long to make it, and you want to remake the body if you've got little faults, that's absolutely fine to do as well. So this doesn't need to stay in there, so I can actually just pull that out. Okay. We might even add a wire through it in a bit. Well, depends what position what we're going to do with it, really. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit trickier. So this one, I put a wire through. It helps me get it out of the mold by having the wire through it, but it sometimes takes a little bit of practice to get it through the middle. And like I say, sometimes they get it through the middle, sometimes they don't. We'll see in a minute. Um, this one is a thick one because I don't want it to have too much bend in case I want to stand that leg upright. What are you laughing at, Richard? <laughs> Richard's laughing at it. I never oh, know laughing. Nick, Nicky's comments are hilarious. Okay. Curious why it's called a cat tongue. Obviously, they've never been licked by a cat. It's like really rough sandpaper. It has actually got a bit of texture to it. Has it? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's not <laughs> smooth, smooth. It's not like... So, certainly not like rubbing sandpaper on, but yeah, it has got, um, I think that's what they call them, isn't it, a cat tongue tool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. We've not, we've not made it either. up. We've not made it up. <laughs> I don't think we made it. It's, it's not really very textured. It's just almost matte rather than shiny finish to it, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, they're a nice tool anyway. Okay, so... 18 gauge wire is a nice thick one. Obviously it has got some flex to it, but if you want to keep the leg pretty rigid, you want a thicker wire. Also, it's easier to pull it out of the mold if, it's, if the wire is thicker. If I go for a thinner wire, look at these ones, Richard. What's this one? Uh, these are 26, so these are thinner. So remember guys, with the florist wires, uh, the, the higher the number, the thinner the wire, so the more flexible it is. So if you want something rigid, you want to go for the lower number. So can you see how bendy that is? If I need to put a wire through and I want to bend the leg, then actually thin wire is good. 
But if I try putting that in there and pulling that paste out, there's a little bit of weight on that paste. All that's going to happen is that's just going to bend as I try to pull it out of the leg. Okay. Hopefully I'm making sense with this. Where's my other 18 line? Is that 18? Which one did I use earlier? Did I just seal it back up again? No, I picked up the right packet the first time. Sorry guys. This is why sometimes sometimes I pre-record the videos. It, do, so, it does actually say the number again. I'm so well. slow with these things. I know, but I thought I actually had another packet that was open, but they weren't 18. Okay, so again we've got, can you see that same slit? And I know you've not seen me put this in yet, I, I will put it in. We'll like, get these out and then we'll put new ones in. So I'm going to put it in the bottom of that slit and push it in. Now these have actually been in here a couple of hours. So this is when, you know, when you've asked me about different modeling pastes, this is when it's going to make a difference as to how long you can leave it in. This, I don't mind pushing a skewer in because it's not set completely hard after a few hours. It's absolutely fine. It might be that I can't bend it. If I want to bend the knee, it might be too stiff for me to bend. Um, so if I was wanting to bend the knee, I would have probably taken it out sooner. Now, I don't know if I'm actually going in at a little bit of an angle, so we'll find out soon enough. Okay. What did you say? Watch your head a second, that's it. So I think I'm most of the way through there. Now, if you can, try and open it up a little bit. You'll see these ones end up with a little bit of a seam on as well. Okay, then we'll carefully pull. Oh no, I didn't go all the way through. Can you see? My wire ends here, and I know that because when I've pulled, the wire supported up to this point and that bit kind of bent a little bit. Let's push it a bit further in and then uh, it'll be alright, I think. It's quite close to the edge of the leg there. So can you see, we end up with a little bit of a seam on our leg there. Okay, we'll deal with that in a minute, but what I'm going to do is just put some more paste in this so you guys can see. Oh, we didn't put some more paste in this, did we? This guy, we'll put paste in both of these. For the body, it takes about nine grams of paste. Now, if you put too much in, guys, and it sticks out the back, you can run a sharp knife over carefully like that. The, and I, I often do do that, but just be mindful that it can cut your mold, okay? You can end up taking little bits off, and before you know it, you've got all these chipped looking edges where your knife is caught, and then you're not gonna get quite as nice a finish. So, nine grams were said only for the body. Which is actually less than you, you think for the body. It's almost 10 grams. It's still too much. Okay, all that will happen is it will just stick out the top and back of my mold a little bit. Oops, I've got a hole in my bag, it just got straight back out. Okay, again, I can feel now that that tile was from earlier. Is, is much, much thicker. Remind me, Richard, before we finish, to show people what the Saracino looks like without the Tylos. So normally, guys, they wouldn't add the CMC or Tylos to the Saracino modeling paste. It is only because it was so warm earlier today when I was using it that it was just so soft that I needed to put something in it just to, to help. Okay, so we'll start by trying to do a ball so that we're rolling out our creases and cracks. And then what we'll do is we'll roll it a little bit more kind of sausage shaped. Sometimes you have to roll them a little bit to the shape of the mold to be able to get them in. And I don't know if you can really see, but it goes quite deep in there, so which is this bit of the body here, this front bit, it goes quite deep. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and push into that bit first. And if you can, if it helps, open up the mold a little bit and then give it a really firm press. Okay. Then we're gonna work it into the neck. So I think I've still got a tiny, tiny bit too much on there, so I am actually going to cut a little bit off. Actually more than I thought I would have extra on there. Okay. Now, when it's in the mould, especially because I've cut it off, it gives me a flat back. You can't really see too much on that one. I don't know if you can see a bit more on this one. Can you see we get a sharper edge? there. Now you can either wait while it comes out of the mould and just gently sort of slice the corner off. Now this one's quite hard because it was made quite a few hours ago. 
So this, again, is just what you want to bear in mind, depending on how long you've left it, it's going to depend on what you can do to it. Like afterwards, like if you can move it around, if you can cut bits off, or if you're going to break bits, if it's been sort of setting for a while. So I'm just going to rub that cactum tool over the edge just so we don't have any sharp marks. So can you see it's just rounded that off a little bit more than that side. The other option is rather than waiting while it comes out of the mould, if we carefully do this, we can get something like the catch-on tool in. Or you can use your finger if you're careful. If I just put that in and just gently pull it, and I only need to do the sides of the back, don't worry about um, under here. You can do the tops of the shoulders if you want, but they're, they have got a slight curve to them anyway, so it's not too bad. You can do the back of the neck if you want. So can you see you just pulling it across? Sorry guys, the dog is probably snoring now. So it just takes the edge off. So I'm not doing it a lot, I'm not pressing particularly hard. If it's super soft, give it five minutes before you do this. Or which of the heads in the fridge? Um, if it's really hard, again, you won't be able to do this. So just, you want it, so it's, it's firm enough that when you touch it, you know, it will still make an indentation, but you have to put some kind of pressure on there to do, to make an indentation. Okay, so you won't be able to tell a lot when it's in the mold, but when we remove it, we should just have slightly more rounded edges on the back. So we'll give that again five, ten minutes. And it has started to cool down a little bit in here so it's not really hot like earlier. If I'd have given it five, ten minutes it would have still been way too soft. Okay, so we'll come back to the legs in a minute. And well, uh, apologies that I'm kind of going backwards and forwards with the different body parts. It's only because I pre-made some bits earlier but hopefully you guys are getting some sort of hints and tips from this. I don't know if you guys, if there's any particular bits you guys normally struggle with or if you guys watching that haven't used them all too much yet. Okay, so I think this is the one with the polystyrene ball. Quite a few people saying they missed the Tuesday morning lives. I know, we're just so disorganised. <laughs> That's why this stopped. That and to be honest, when we were moving business premises from the old shop to the new one, um, it was just stuff everywhere, wasn't it? It was just really hard work to... And um, I've just been working on new products and still trying to sort out this book and stuff, but we've, we've ended up uh, not really with much time for the lives. So I did, do you need to make more of an effort to do more lives? Although I tell you what, I'm glad I didn't do a morning one today because um, it would have just been way too hot, everything would have gone wrong. I'm glad it was the evening. Yes, so Richard's got me these out of the fridge, guys. I can tell the, the mold themselves do actually feel a little bit cold, so it should be enough. These feel firm at the back. Like I say, because that cocoa butter in this particular paste is heat sensitive, so by cooling it down a bit, it's caused it to harden. So do you guys remember what I said? If you put one stick in, there's a chance it might twist. If we put two in, it just means it's going to be a little bit easier for us to pop it out. So again, if you want, you can pull a little bit from the edges, but just make sure when you pull in that you are not pressing on that nose. So she's actually not too bad. I've lost a little bit of definition under a lip. So I could either push that in again. Don't just re-push it in that like you'll end up with a double face imprint. You would have to re-soften the paste fully and uh, push it back in. Or the other option is I can use one of my tools. Let's find a small, I'm looking for this one, but small. I don't know what these ones are called, but I'll get everyone to put links up to them. What do we call these ones? I just call them the rubber-ended tools, but I think they're just a series of numbers out there. If I just gently rub this in here, I say gently, I can actually put a bit of force on because it's been in the fridge, so it's pretty firm. It will come back to room temperature though, again guys, will this paste. So, if you're thinking it was quicker for me to just kind of press the lip in a little bit myself, like what I'm doing here. Um, if you let it go back to room temperature, it'll, be, it'll soften a little bit and you'll be able to press that lip in easier. Sorry guys, can you all hear the dog snoring a lot? He's getting his moment of fame. He does every single video. Okay, there we go. The only downside, I mean it's, it's quite big actually, the back of her head. The downside of this is that when I want to paint it, she rolls. So I have to kind of pop her back into the mould the opposite way around when I'm working on her so that she's held that way around. Okay, so this one is the one without the polystyrene balls. We'll see how this one comes out. So again, we'll put these two sticks in. You can push them in at a little bit of an angle if you want so they go deep into the head. But and just watch that you don't put the sticks in at the side and the rest of holes in the side of her head and you might see that. 
Really yeah, if you are putting them in at a slight angle, just make sure they're not going to poke into the front of her face. Okay, so just gently pulling it away a little bit. And then oh, pull it out. So she's got slightly more definition on this one than the other one, so I think that's fine. Can you guys see? I forget, this is actually really like colour paste, isn't it, to you? So I'll zoom in once you've got them. Can you guys see that? Okay. Yep, pop it out. So we'll come back to that and look at your different options with the eyes as well shortly. So we were on our legs, weren't we? So if you're adding the paste to your legs, let's go for our dark and skin color for this one. Hopefully I've got enough paste left for this one. Okay, so we've got 9.3 grams per leg. So that's the similar amount to what we have in the body, but in each leg. more than I need. Um, also guys, if you're wondering, we do sell these scales. I know a lot of you guys that watch the, our videos regularly probably have these already. So I'm going to try and get it as close as I can to 9.3. That's 9.37, but that's fine. Okay, that's fine. That's, again, close enough. And I've still got plenty of paste left, actually, for the arm, so that's good. I guess the advantage of using um, a pre-coloured paste that comes in like a pack, so if I just use the brown on it, sound is if I, you know, it doesn't matter if I didn't pull off enough for every body part because I can just go back to the pack and use the same colour. Whereas sometimes when I mix my own colours and I haven't mixed enough, I have I try and mix the same colour again. She ends up with like different arm colours to like body or head and things. Okay, so it's going to need a bit of kneading. So like I say, it, unless it's really hot weather, you shouldn't really have to add your CMC or Tylos to your modeling paste. If you're using fondant, you will need to add CMC or Tylos. So you can leave them in until they're fully set, but bear in mind, if they're fully set, which makes it easier to remove them from the mold, you're gonna have a really rigid looking body because uh, model, because the arms are gonna be dead straight, the, arms are gonna, the legs are gonna be straight, and you're not gonna be able to have any kind of movement. So it is difficult choosing between, is it gonna be, do you wanna have, bent arms and legs, but it's harder to remove them from the mold, or do you want to make it easier and have them nice and rigid, but actually your figure looks a bit odd because everything's so straight. Okay, so throw this other one into a ball as well. So those of you guys that use the mold, do you tend to use it the same way I am doing, do you think? Or maybe you guys actually have some hints and tips for me. Like I said, I bet a lot of people probably use them a lot more than you do. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. Because obviously, like, I made the moulds, but I don't use moulds a lot because I would usually make them by hand. Um, so I made these really just based on what my models would normally look like. And the idea of them was to make making figures a little bit quicker for you guys. And I mean, it depends how much detail you're putting on them and stuff. Sometimes they still take a long time. But if you're having to duplicate figures like if you're doing a lot for a cake, then sometimes it is easier to just have a bit of a mold and then you can still add to it and make it your own kind of design and style. So what I'm doing, guys, is just before I cut this, I think it looks a bit marbled, just her leg, oops, dropped that one. Um, I'm making them a little bit more like kind of carrot shapes, or I'm trying, maybe not carrots, but thinner at one end, thicker at the other, and the thinner end is gonna go in our foot and sort of ankle area, and then the chunkier end is gonna go at the top of the leg and I'm going to start with the thin bit first just because I find it easier but you know you might find it easier to start with the chunky bit first in fact I think sometimes I do I forget I forget between using them I forget how I do it okay so we're fairly thin it's easier to open the leg up on the first one now it's fine if it does crease on the way in but bear in mind sometimes the crease doesn't come out so there we go pushing it in press really firmly because if there is a little crack or crease we hopefully can squeeze it out but like you saw with the body there we can get rid of it or it might be that actually if your um, figures were in a dress or that bit's covered then you, that you might not even worry too much about that bit of a crease or crack okay so i've pushed it in just make sure that depending on sort of what your paste is like that if you pushed it really far in it hasn't held your mold sort of apart just check that mold feels like it's sprung back into the position it's meant to be okay let's 
go again with this one. Should I do the opposite way around, actually? And we'll see which way is easier. I mean, it's easier to open the fat end first, the chunkier end, I should say, of the leg. I think that the narrow bit is tricky no matter which way you do it, to be honest, guys. I feel like I look like I made a neater job with that way, starting with the thin bit. I don't know. You guys let me know which way you prefer to do it. So I'm just going to go over with my finger. I'm really, you know, firmly pressing it because if I have caused any folds and creases, I want to try and push them down. Okay? So you can see I've got little bits that kind of go over the edges. I try and get them off the best I can. I'm just doing that with my finger. Now, this is where we kind of get, can you see this little lip on the edge? So again, once you've taken it out, as long as it's not too soft, you can just trim with a knife. This one's probably set a little bit too hard, to be honest. But it's still letting me kind of trim it off a little bit. But if it was a little bit softer, I could then smooth over that a little bit easier. Now, it should, with hot hands, eventually sort of soften a little bit again and let me re-go over that. Oops, I've gone a bit deep there, but it's fine. Okay. So again, usually I'd swap for something like the Captain Tool and just rub over, but because this is now quite hard, it would have to be kind of the heat from my finger that would work back over that to soften it a little bit. And again, you know, it might be depending on what the wearing on yours that you're not too worried about that line. But if they are, so wearing shorts or skirts or something where the legs are out or swim cozy to get the bit off the foot as well then you want to try and get that line down if you can now if you're wondering why i made the mold with the line at the front there was a lot more shape to the back of the leg so if i had made it flat at the back because you have to have a flat bit that's at one point on these molds um and i felt like that was the most natural bit of your leg that was maybe flat anyway or more so than the back of your leg or the side so that's how we ended up with the the front bit as the flat bit have a good craft knife as well guys um it doesn't matter like it doesn't have to be the same as that one but another one that i use so, you know sometimes use that it's just this one's got a heavier handle this one's got a nice lightweight handle so it makes it a bit easier for me to sort of be really sturdy steady with it I say steady i don't have a steady hand really but slightly steadier with one than one with a heavy handle okay let's cut a little bit more off the front of this leg here and of course if you don't want to do this you don't have to but it's going to neaten up i've actually cut a little bit more just at the front just so that can you see how flat her leg is here and that's again just because of how the mold goes if i trim more off there towards there it just gives that front bit of leg a little bit more shape also these ones are starting to firm up a tiny bit while we're waiting while i'm messing around with this leg here okay so the other thing you can put in if you want to obviously you don't have to but if you want to you can have like a knee so if i take like my dresden tool have a look at where the back of the knee is the front of your knee comes slightly lower down just by a little bit and i'm going to press in this is a little dip don't press it so hard that your wire comes through and then i'm going to come up the side now this is actually not very obvious on the on the uh, really pale skin color so the really pale, pale paste don't show very well i don't think on camera do you richard no we have this, I we have, draw around what I'm doing with a felt pen. We might see it on the other legs. We have this discussion all the time. Yeah. Also, can you see, because it's quite rigid, this one's going to have to keep a pointy toe. There's no way I can bend this leg. But if I was going to bend it, I would take out the wire and do the bend. Um, but like I say, this one has set a bit too much. So this is what I want you to kind of bear in mind is, you know, have a bit of a play around with them and how long you think you need to leave them to set to be able to do what you want with them. So a bit like we did with the body, you can rub the edge down a little bit, but depending on how much paste you've got when you release that, you sometimes just put the line back on there. So just be careful of that. Can you see what I'm doing with my head in the way again? That's okay. Okay. 
it's just easier using like the capstan tool than it is getting your finger in there. I'm not going to worry as much about the foot area, but and it's always easier to get one side of the leg than the other. See, because that's sort of the outside edge, it's just easier to pull it to one side, the mold that is. And you could spend much longer sort of working on this, tidying it up than what I am doing. So it's almost, can you see, just getting in that edge and then tilting the tool a little bit and then going up and down. Okay, and then once I've done this, I would give it a little bit of time to firm up. Again, I won't know if I've done it neatly or not until you take it out. This is the difficult thing with moulds. You don't really know what they're going to look like until you take them out for if you kind of push them in properly or, or not. And like I say, small little creases and cracks we can deal with uh, later. We can fill it back in. So when I did that one, the body wasn't actually too soft to so let me do it. But if the paste is very soft and you try and fill in a crack, it's not going to fill in. All that you're going to do is just squash the whole thing. So again, we're going to give this a little bit longer. Not ages, they're not super, super soft, but we are going to give them a little bit longer. Let's take this one out. We'll see if this one worked on, or didn't work. So again, pushing it in. Doesn't need to come out the bottom. And then pull. There we go, got another body. If you know that you don't want her to be dead straight like this, at this stage, while she's still warm, you can move her around. So can't do it on this one because she's made much earlier. This bit here will connect to the legs, but it's gonna this bit, the front will go further forwards, and the back bit, sort of the bum area, will come, can you see, backwards. Hopefully this makes sense. Can you see she's starting to get a bit of an arch there in her back? Go gently because it will crease and wrinkle if you're not careful. Okay. So you can arch her back that if you want. Again, depends what you want to do with that. Now, if the back is arched a little bit like that, your neck's probably not going to want to go that far backwards, but come forwards a little bit like that. Just a little bit. Okay? Just again, just watch out for wrinkling. If it's just a tiny bit, just rub your finger or sort of rub around your tool just gently over it just to take out any little wrinkles. Okay? If it's easier, you can leave her on the side, but she should still be all right on the, on the back, okay? Okay, well, that's a little body's forming now, haven't we? Arms. These are the worst bit of the whole thing, I'm afraid to say. Now, because I put them in earlier and it was so soft, it might be that actually these have had a little bit too long and might snap when we take them out, but we'll, we'll see. So too soft. If they've not been in too long enough, they'll be too soft. And what happens is when you take them out, because it's very small, very thin, and the mold's quite tight around them, they pull and they stretch as they come out. If they've been in too long, they snap. So it's just getting that nice, kind of happy medium for these. So let me just pull a wire out one of my legs. I'm going to use one of these wires again. You could probably go slightly thinner with the wire if you wanted. Can you see we've got those little slip bits in the top? So let's push. So even this wire is actually quite thick for these arms. They actually feel like they're, they're fairly firm, like maybe a bit too firm. So we'll see. Okay, and then I'm gonna try, if I can, and hold it open a little bit, and then carefully pull. Push your head. Sorry. There we go. Okay, so the wire is very close to the wrist there, but hopefully you guys can see that again we've got the same thing here with that little ridge so again it's a bit hard this one cut that off if you can just be careful when you're smoothing this one though because they are so thin that what will happen is you can end up stretching the arm so just be very very careful with that let's try again with this one yeah i apologize for the uh, color paste so he's using We'll, we'll swap it, we'll yeah. go for the darker paste as well in a minute. Also, I think I have left these ones in just a little bit too long. So these I actually made after the legs because, yeah, this is too thick, is that? Let's let's try without because, like I said, they're pretty firm, so it might be that they come out on their own, so we'll see. So if we try and turn it upside down, yeah, and then sort of really kind of pull the mold open as much as possible. The thing I find that happens the most is I pull it, it starts to come out, and then I, I stop pulling. And I end up letting go and it sort of snaps back closed. 
as that's half coming out and then it sort of pulls my arm in half or it leaves a big indentation where it's sort of caught in. Hopefully that makes sense. Does that make sense? Now with the arms, guys, the palms are the bit that you can see on this. The back of the hand is the plain bit. I'm going to do some more and then hopefully you'll see that a little bit better. I should really take those off before they harden too much because we won't get them off at all soon. And it might be that actually it's easier to handle them on a wire because you've got them on your hand a little bit less. Okay. So it is coming off. I'm not going to do it on all of it actually, but it is coming off. It's just a little bit trickier on the arms. So the bigger and the chunkier the arms, the easier it would have been for us to get out of the mold. So I don't know if you guys have seen the baby and the child mold that I have. That is a uh, much sturdier kind of sized pieces for the arms and the legs. But because this is an adult figure, we wanted it to look taller and slimmer to show it kind of looking more grown up. Whereas sometimes when I do them a little bit shorter with wider arms and legs, they have a tendency to look a little bit more childlike, which is sort of like my, my childlike one the baby and the, and the toddler one, but they are much easier to get out of the mold than this one. Okay, so we these are small, 1.4 grams in each one. If you prefer, you can put it in and you can trim it off the back, but again, remember, be careful of those molds. You don't want to catch them. You'd be surprised at how small 1.4 grams is. That's just over. So that piece of paste there, is just slightly more than we need. Okay, so one point, oh, a bit more in. Well, that didn't change the weight then, I don't think. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so they're about the same. So again, just give it a bit of need, make sure you've got no creases and cracks. We're gonna roll it to roughly the shape of the arm, so a bit sort of longer and thinner, rather than trying to push a ball in. If you find it easy putting a ball in, that's absolutely fine. I just find it a little bit easier to start with roughly the shape. Just roughly. Am I heading the way again, or are we good? You fine. So again, if you want, you can open up that a little bit and try and squeeze it in and then kind of release you'll be able to see where the arms a little bit too big for the mold and that when you release it kind of squeezes out the top so i'm going to carefully try and squeeze it all down to the hand area so don't try not to have it too thick at the hand bit and just make sure that it hasn't stuck to your finger and kind of come back out again which sometimes it doesn't i haven't realized this my fingers are a little bit tacky and i've kind of brought it back up I brought it out of the mold when I've lifted my finger. Okay, so I think I've got a tiny, tiny bit too much in there. So what I'm going to try and do is just cut that off very carefully. Now we can use our cut some tools again, but again, it's going to get a little bit trickier because this is smaller space to get into. Okay, so I've got the smaller cut some tool now for this one. You can use the big one, it's just a bit more awkward. So it should help us with those lines a little bit. We might get a little bit of a line still, but hopefully something that's easier for us to sort out once we get it out of the mold. Just make sure anything that comes off the edge of the fingers is removed. Get this other one in. I've got paste of stuff all over me now, sorry guys. And sometimes it just doesn't want to go in. squeezing it down into the mold so if you think oh it's not filled one end but it's really chunky at the other try your best to maneuver it down to fill the other end put that line back again on that one okay, going in with that cutting tool again if you have even just like uh, not point of a gram less you will find it doesn't fill quite to the top of the mold but that actually if you haven't filled to the top of the mold you're not going to get that line on the edge quite as much which is great but it means that your arms are going to be really really skinny so just watch out for that guys okay so 
So I'm going to put a wire in these now. The other ones were a little bit too hard and I can feel too much resistance. These ones I think might be a little bit too soft. And so if I push this in, they will squash and concertina down. So we'll put those to one side again. I'm going to go back to our legs that we did earlier. Okay, I'm going to go in this little slit, pushing in. You can sometimes see a little sort of ridge along my leg as I'm pushing in. And I'm hoping I'm not coming out the ankle, but I'm not sure. You're on that camera at the moment, okay. Zoe. So again, just pull it out a little bit, just check in that's loose. If you want to go back over the edge a little bit, you can do. Like I say, you might not completely get rid of it, but it's just going to give us a slightly smoother line. Okay. And then, if you've got someone else to hand as well, then that could help, and that they could help you hold the mould open. There we go. So the, the bit you have to be careful of is when you pull it out is the ankle. Because if the foot gets stuck and you're still pulling the leg, the ankle can stretch, so that's just what we want to watch out for. I'm just going to manoeuvre this a little bit because it's just caught the um, ankle a little bit. So we bend my leg a tiny bit so it comes out through sort of the toe bit here. Again, I'm not too worried where I've got a little gap there because I'm going to smooth it down and we can fill it in. Just watch out for the leg because this one's much softer than the one that I made earlier. So just watch out for it twisted on the leg. Okay. Now where I've smoothed it, it's got a little sort of fold line and what I can do is once this firmed up we can add paste into that fold line rather than cutting it. Okay. The other thing I can do is just bend the toes slightly if I want the toes slightly. So if you imagine if she was stood on something, even if she had sort of, if she stood on her toes, they would bend still a little bit like that. Okay. She's got a little bit of crinkling, wrinkling on her toes. So my craft knife doesn't want to cut it either because I've not got it very clean now after cutting it a few times. So you paste um, sticks to the blade, guys, isn't it? When it sticks to the blade, you want to get a very nice cut, so just watch out for that. Also, I'm going to firm up a bit first. If your paste is still a bit soft, instead of you getting a nice cut, what will happen is it just kind of tears through it. So just watch out for that, be very mindful of that. Okay, let's try for a knee in this one. So look at where the dip is in the back of the leg and come to the front, come slightly lower down the front, not by much, just a little bit. So we're pressing a little bit here and then coming up the side, up the side, just a little bit there and there. Does that show a bit more on this one or not really? Yeah, it's better on that it's one. It's only that you see it slightly from the side and you can see that I do need to pull out a little crack. Okay. Now what if you wanted to bend a leg? Or if you it's good you should say that, because a few people have asked about adding movement to your figures. So I guess, yeah, legs bent. Yeah, so let's, let me just take the wire out of this one a minute just so I can reuse that wire, but these still are soft enough that we can bend them, you see. So you don't have to put the wire in to pull the leg out, but it's going to make my life a little bit easier. Oh, stuck out the back of my leg. Mm. Okay. That's fine. We don't need that wire in, so what I'm going to do is we're just going to nudge it back down. If, it, if I can't get rid of the mark, we could always remake the leg, or like I say, we can fill it back in with paste. Um, but yeah, these are still quite soft, too, so we should be able to give them some movement. So, let me just work on soft pressing down this. Now, you can see I, I'm kind of manipulating that edge a little bit to round it off, but use your tool if you want. You can see the leg is still very flexible, so I have to watch out that I'm not bending and moving the leg about too much because it could stretch or just misshape completely. Now, if I'm going to bend the leg, I'm not going to bother putting the knee mark on. So what I'm going to do is just check you've still got some flex. Just gently, carefully crease there. Okay. And then where the knee is, what we're going to do is we're going to bring it not to a point, but we're going to press in a little bit here and here. Okay. And then if you imagine your knee's slightly flatter at kind of the front, I think. I feel like I should have a look at my knee now. 
I'm just going to kind of bring it. To, I don't want it to be pointy. Can you see that kind of shape we've got there? Okay. And you know, decide whether you want the toes out or actually, you know, would the toes be curved around like that? It might depend. Put some piece of stuff there. It might depend on like the position the figure is sitting in. So we did actually make a little toadstool earlier. This one. Well, I say a little toadstool, it's actually quite a big toadstool, isn't it? So if we were doing like a figure that was sat down, like a little fairy on a toadstool, I could sit this onto the top of that. Can you guys see that from there? Now it might not hold its shape straight away. And what I might want to do is work out the position it wants to be in first and then leave it to firm up just a tiny bit on my board rather than adding it in place straight away. Let's see if we can add this one. Would you have? Would she have one leg straight, one bent, do you think, sat down? Or would she... What about like that? Do you think? Yeah, I realise you can't really see it very well, can you, from that, from that angle? Have a bit of a play around with it's still soft, but try not to hold it in your hands for too long, otherwise um, it'll just end up a little bit too soft. But I'll just turn it towards me a second while I'm having a look. So these are the bits where normally, um, if it's not alive, I spend quite a while kind of working out what could go where, or you know, she could cross her legs a little bit. I think I'm just going to keep one like that. Do you see Richard? Yeah. Now should she have both toes? I think she should have both toes pretty pointed. So we're going to point both toes. Okay. It is actually still, it's still very warm in here guys, so I kind of can tell, like with the pace, that it's very warm. So I'm going to point them like this way. Looks like I've got them in their toes. Okay, I can, I'm going to cut, once these are firmed up, I'm going to cut a tiny bit off, so this front line here. And then, if you see where I've got a hole in the foot, we can always fill that in. Do you people uh, like in your toad stool? Do you like my toad stool? It's a bit bigger than I was planning, but it needed to be big enough for... Um, I was going to do it in the live, and then I thought, oh, no, it's just going to take too long. So, yeah, I did that. Maybe if you guys want a little toad stool, we could do that another time. Something like that. Okay, so... So I'm going to leave those to firm up just a little bit. And like I say, it's, you might not necessarily get it in the right position straight away, so you want them to firm up, but you don't want them to sort of be so hard that they're set solid, and then when you try putting them on, you're like, oh no, they don't, they don't actually fit, I've bent them slightly wrong, and it doesn't look right, and then you can't move them. And just getting that happy medium between is the really tricky bit, and unfortunately it only comes with practice, and sometimes, you know, sometimes I get it wrong, and the weather, like the heat changes, whether it's going to work and stuff. Okay. So these arms are much softer than the last set of arms. So let's see if we can get them out. Should we do one with, one without a wire? Yeah. I feel like I am going to actually have to swap to a slightly thinner wire. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. It is a bit bendy. What gauge is this one, Richard? Is it 24? 22. 22. Okay. So it's a little bit bendy, but the arms don't have much weight, so there shouldn't be too much resistance on these ones. But they're quite soft, so I don't think I'll be able to just drop them out on their own at the moment. We'll see. Okay, so we're carefully pushing this in. And then hopefully let's just do this first. Try and hold it open a little bit if you can. And then come out hand. There we go. Okay, wow. We've still got a bit of a dip there. Let's see if we can get one out without. Because it's softer. Oh, it did come out. I was going to say it might not come out. Okay. So, like I say, if you do want to trim any off, I think I maybe just had a tiny bit too much paste in, you know, for this bit to work nicely. If you do want to trim it off, remember it has to have a tiny bit of drying time, otherwise, it's not going to cut off. It's just going to sort of tear and drag. And again, this will depend what kind of paste you're using. If you're using like a different paste that sets quite hard and crusty on the outside um, fairly quickly, you might find that it just cracks if you try trimming bits. Let's see, let's see if it is going to cut. Oh, same problem again. Maybe. 
So my blades uh, do end up, oh no, this one feels like it's got paste stuck to it already. They do end up quite blunt quite quickly, so you have to give them a wipe or replace them fairly regularly. No, it's not, I'm not going to work on this one. It's too, either this is too soft or my blades are just too dirty. Okay. But with the hands, does it show better on this one, Richard? Yeah. I've made them so it's actually the palm that you see. So the back of the hand is pretty plain and flat. And that, that's usually how I make my figures with the palm and there's nothing really on the back. So, and I don't know how well you guys can see. If you want to do more with the hand, just, nudge to just make sure it's not too chunky. Just nudge that way a little bit, yeah, that's it, yeah, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Just for the camera. Thank you. Perfect. Just make sure, yeah, that it doesn't look too chunky from the side. And can you see that the thumb is actually just slightly attached? So what I'm going to do is just cut in next to my thumb. For if this is more if you want to open the hand out. If you don't want to, you don't have to do this. Just so you've got a little bit more mobility on your thumb. And the reason I didn't do that when we made the moulds was just that the thumb was so small that I thought if I attach it to the rest of the hand in the mould, it's going to come out easier than if it was out on its own. Just with Just because of the size of it. Then can you see, we should have some lines where the fingers are anyway, so you should be able to cut down each of those lines, as long as your paste isn't super soft, because it will stretch if it's super soft. And I'm holding it by the wrist, but just check your hands out too warm, otherwise what's going to happen is you're going to melt the wrist. Okay. And if you have got very square fingers at the end, just try and open them up and give them a little pinch. slightly more hand-like now on the back and it's, it's not a detailed hand guys but it is so small that it's very very difficult to get a lot of detail on the back of that hand and sometimes what I find is when I try adding the detail um, like I mean look, look at the wrinkles and things on my hand is that it ages them a lot so actually I thought it was best to keep them fairly smooth and simple on the back Okay, also the, that is the back of the mould, so you wouldn't get any kind of imprint on that mould anyway. So, again, if you want to bend it, just look for the dip in the arm and we can make a bend. Just make sure you're bending it to the right direction. So if it's bending inwards, you know, just check that the palm is inwards, for example. Okay, it might be that you don't want to bend them or that you've not decided what you're doing yet. If you're not sure what you're going to do with your arms, like what direction you're going to put them in and stuff, then don't necessarily make these at the beginning. Work on your other body parts first and then do your arms closer to the end because you don't want to do them and then set too hard and them not look right. So if you leave those till nearer the end to make, it's going to just be a little bit easier when you're attaching them. Okay. And then the other thing is attaching now our body to our legs. So can you see she's got a bit of a dip here? And again, this is why getting it just the right temperature or leaving it the right amount of time is kind of crucial. Unless you're dressing them, which do you have the A little bit closer to you, please. Thank Unless you. you're dressing them, guys, in which case like it doesn't matter if there's not much flex or if they don't fit together tightly because you're not going to see those seams. But if you're doing like a little fairy, like mine hasn't isn't wearing anything. You want these bits to be soft so that we can try and piece them together fairly easily. So what I would normally do is I'd do the legs, give them a little bit of drying time, I'd put them where I want them to go, then I'd make my body and while the body's still soft I would sit that onto like my legs for example, I think my hands in the way is now if you see it. Okay, so I'm actually going to go onto the flesh coloured one. This body might actually be a bit too hard, so she might be a bit rigid looking, but we'll see. So I actually have another glass dome for my other one. I'm just going to take the top off the dome because that's going to get in the way. Richard, can you just check that out? Drop that yeah, that's a few good ideas. Um, which is a good one. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, Helen says, if you make them too early, just pop them in a Ziploc sandwich yeah. bag until they're needed and then bring them out. Yeah, yeah, you can do. Yeah, they stay fine in a Ziploc bag. I'm just going to have another drink, sorry. You're going to give them a quick, have you made that grass? <laughs> mm-hmm. So this is just a chunk of all the styrene um, that I kind of broke up so it was a bit uneven. And then it's, it's actually modelling paste, but you can use fondant. This is the green... Actually, no, it is fondant. It's just it's the thick fondant. This is the light green serracino. Um, what do they call the fondant? Pasta top. Pasta top. And then all I did was take the Kemper tool. This is the professional one. Yeah, the they call it the professional Kemper tool. But it's a, it's, it's just a, it's the larger of the two Kemper tools. The other one's got like a, a smaller end and a metal handle. And all I did was push it in. It's still soft enough actually for me to keep it out. I think there might be a little bit at the back there. I haven't quite done. So push it in. So if you just push it in, it leaves holes. But if you push it in and twist it. So you don't want to put your paste on too thin if you're going to do this effect. Otherwise, you're just going to go straight through to underneath. So it's, it's a decent thickness of paste. So put it on and kind of twisting it. If you do like kind of furry sheep effect and stuff with this as well, can you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's not a neat effect, but it works well for what I want. Especially if I then start adding things like leaves and foliage and like longer blade blades of grass into it so because she's just for display i just wanted a piece of polystyrene to stand her in and often you best keeping them on polystyrene they're standing figures anyway like if you're going to put them on a cake you could have it doesn't have to be as big as this but you could have like a little thin plinth of polystyrene that's iced that they stand in that you could put on top of the cake just make sure the polystyrene itself doesn't come into contact with the cake like put a cake board or something underneath just because it's going to be easier than us wiring this into an actual cake. And then I'm going to work out where I want the feet to go. So, you know, you might even have, I think my hand's in the way, you know, one leg this way, you might have the other one sort of right next to it or going further out or even, you know, freestanding like that. But it's a little bit trickier because we have to let it dry in that position. We have to put something underneath it to hold it kind of in place. I feel like we should have it in that position. Or should we just have it so it's just touching like that? Maybe just touching. Maybe just touching. Choices, choices. Okay. What's going to happen is this is going to go down into my polystyrene a little bit. Now this wire is pretty tough to bend. So for this to go through my body, which it needs to kind of go through the body, we're going to have to bend it. But the body, which I'm going to my arm, Richard. Are you on that camera next to you there, Myron? Go stop it in the middle of the two legs. So that wire would come too close to the side. So we have to bend this wire. So what I'm going to do is allow for some wire at the bottom. Then we're going to bend it towards the middle of the figure and then it's going to come back up again. Okay, so hopefully this is going to make sense. So I'm going to take it out. I'm going to know where I want it to go. So let's use some pliers. I'm going to bend it a bit of an angle like that. And it's not going to come too far across and then I'm going to bend it back again so we're getting this kind of shape I okay, guess now this is what I do in the Mel video which is so she's got wire inside like what I'm going to do with this one I'm certain she has anyway I tend to forget things a few months after I've made them um, but yeah so she's got wire inside so and that bent like that so if I make no sense in this video do check out this one on YouTube as well I'll get Emily to put a link to that one on um, or maybe just watching this one and that one will give you a better idea in case there's any little bits and pieces that I do sort of tweak or do slightly differently. So that's going to go back into my leg. Let's put that leg in position. You can, if you want, sort of dig it into your base a little bit to kind of hold it in. Although she's probably going to lose a bit of her foot if I go too far in. I want a little bit of water. You can use a little glue if you want, but water usually works okay for me, guys. In fact, actually, you know what? I don't want them to have a dip. I'm going to just fill that back in with grass. Good thing about this is I can just kind of do that and it just covers it back up again. I'm actually going to put some water on under her foot, actually. It's going to be easier. Do you know what? I love this brush. This is silver and see anyone. I'm saving it for best, but I couldn't find my water brush. So I'm using this one instead. I really like it. Even though it's only for water. Okay, so I'm going to put that in there, positioning it where I want it to go. Work out now, before you push this wire in too far, work out where you're gonna put your other legs so that you know if this one needs to be straight up or if it's gonna have a lean. So I'm gonna have a bit of a lean, like that. And I'm gonna push that in. 
Now I should really be checking in case it's coming out anywhere at the back and I'm, I'm not doing, but I should really. Okay. Then we're going to have to put this one on. So what do we think? Should we try and have it a tiny bit like that or not? Yeah, at this point, because it's wire as well, guys, you can obviously move it a little bit. It's thick wire, so don't kind of force it, but I feel like it might be safer if I put it on the on the grass though. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna keep it on the grass. Now, if you know it's gonna be kept rigid, you can put a wire in. I'm actually gonna use the thinner wire, the slightly thinner wire, which what size did we say this one was? Uh 22. 22. Because this thick one is supporting the weight. This one's not really supporting the weight like that other one, so I can go for a slightly thinner wire. Let's work out whereabouts that's gonna go again. Just make sure the two hips connect together, okay, that they are together. Just nudge it to your left a little bit. I can both cameras at the moment, that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you can see that. Okay, and then if it's gonna connect into the base, we can push that wire in. Okay. It's only gonna go so far in because this oh there we go. The wire is gonna see it's very bendy and it just wants to bend. Oh hang on. So I can see the wire because I've not quite come out of a toes. Can you see the wire? So we can either take the wire back out of a foot and we put it in so it comes out of a toes, or what I'm gonna do is because I'm just cheating, is I'm just gonna put some grass up the wire a little bit, which kind of should hopefully hide it a little bit at the back of my foot there, okay? I'm gonna put some water between where the legs meet. Just come this way a couple of centimeters, that's it, thank you. Um, have you moved the cameras? Because it seems to be going really far that way now. No. Okay. So, just water where they touch together at the top of the top of you so they can see that? You're on both views at the moment. Okay. Just check that she's not leaning too much. So I feel like she's got a slight lean to one side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try, if I can, and bend that one slightly over. Because it's a thick wire, it might not bend. So what I'm going to do is lift the foot out of the way slightly. And it's going to be a bit more of a bend. Probably going to go too far the other way now. It's the, the issue with the thick wires is um, they are that bit harder to bend and manoeuvre. Now it completely doesn't fit with that one. But again, if these are set solid, solid, you're going to find that they might snap when you're moving them around. So just be very careful of that. Okay. Now these two wires really need to be in the same place. So let's see if we can twist them together. Or the other option is that I can cut one down. Okay. These are going to go through my body. And this is probably better actually if I make another body that's a little bit softer. So this one will sit on. Actually, no, do you know what? No, we're going to do it with this one. Oops, I've cracked her tummy. But we can fill in any bits that go wrong. Okay, so this is why sometimes I can't decide. Firm is good because afterwards I can fill in the gaps between the legs and the body. But then also firm is going to cause me, can you see some cracking like that when I try and bend it? So there's advantages and disadvantages to each thing. If I make a fresh one, it's great, it's soft. I can put it on and I can move it around. However, I'm going to squash it a little bit when I'm putting it on. So I'm going to go with the this one. I might be able to just press into it a little bit. I apologise, I've got all sorts of modelling paste under my fingers. Can you guys see that? So I'm just trying to rub a bit of heat on the back with my finger. She is going to crack on the front, that's fine. Now, it's going to be easier if I just cut this down as well, because can you see how tall the wire is? I need it to be tall enough to go into her head, but I don't really need it as tall as what it is at the moment. So I'm going to trim that down. Let's hold the body on, and then I'll have like a good inch or so extra for the head. It might still be too tall at this stage, that's fine. Okay, I'm going to poke a hole all the way through with the cocktail stick, just so we've got a hole in there first. And then I'm going to try and get those wires through that hole. I've left my cocktail stick in while I'm doing this, just because it can sometimes make it easier to get it in the same hole. There we go, taking it out now. No, I don't think it has gone in the same hole. Normally it does, but it has it because I can see it's close to the edge of the neck. There we go. 
I'm going to push that down now onto our body. So can you see because it's stiff, it's kind of snapped here. If it was soft, we could just blend it in and around. So what we're going to do, should I swap it for a I just have to apologise everybody because it looks like organised chaos what Zoe's working in. The, oh, it's uh, just chaos. Everything around. <laughs> no, it's just chaos. Hang on, I'm just going to move that over that way a little bit. I'm going to swap for a fresh body, actually. <laughs> So sometimes, guys, can you see, it doesn't work for me, and I swap. Let's go again for another body. So a bit of cracking is fine, but I think it was just cracking too much. So that one has had a little bit too long to set. So if you're doing it, guys, do your legs, give them a bit of firming time so that, like if you put them up like this and they're still sinking down, they're too soft, leave them laying down before you put them together. Then work on your body, or like, um, I forgot who it was, sorry, that suggested you could leave it in your Ziploc bag as well. Um, I'm being lazy and I can't be bothered measuring it out, guys, so I'm just going to cut any extra off the back this time. Well, you could always use uh, Edwina mentioned hairdryer to heat the paste up a little bit. Yeah, you could do. Yeah. Just be careful that you don't overdo it in there. Somebody's asked, is it Bruce snoring or is it me snoring? It's Bruce snoring. He's right under my chair. I keep kicking him by accident when I'm moving my feet. He couldn't have put himself in a more awkward place. At least he's uh, not licking my legs. Today he's been trying to lick my legs all day. He doesn't often see my naked legs. <laughs> I don't know why he wants to lick them. Okay, so I'm just trimming it off the back. Like I say, you can do that. It's probably better not to, so that you're not cutting up your mould, but sometimes I can't be bothered measuring. Do I even have that in shot, Richard? Could you see what yeah, I'm Yeah, you chopped down at the moment, yeah. Okay, okay. So this is probably going to be a bit too soft for me to just take out straight away, but... Let's just catch our edges a little bit. The body is actually one of the nicer shapes to get out of the mold, I reckon. The when we bring out the molds for the other ones, that they'll be a little bit easier to use because they'll be bigger. Although saying that, the arms and legs will be longer, so maybe they won't be that much easier to use. I don't know. I mean, it's a little bit easier than making them from scratch if you're not brilliant at making them from scratch kind of thing, but. Especially if you do multiples of them. What am I looking for? A cocktail stick. So we'll go in the top of this. So I'm going to put my thumb. Can you guys see? I don't know which camera I'm on. Which you top down at the moment. On there so that because it's very soft, if I push that and the whole thing kind of squishes down there, um, I don't want that. So if I hold that there, it might keep it a little bit more rigid in place there, hopefully. Okay. Um, let's see if we can get it out or if it's a bit soft. Oh, we got it out. Brilliant. Okay, so because it's soft, we can move the body around. Okay. That's it. Okay. That's good. Thank you. But also, I need to move the head around a little bit as well. So let's move that head forwards. I'm going to try sticking it on here, actually. Now, this is where it can be a bit too soft. So let's see. No, it's through. Okay, that's good. I was worried about it squashing shape completely because it's so soft like when I push it down while it's soft let's just lift it up a little bit we're going to pull these bottom edges out and down a little bit you can see like this now the only thing is I'm not going to be able to blend it because it's soft like the hard one I'd have been able to fill the gap between this I would normally wait a little bit for it to um, firm up before we start blending it with water so I'm going to put some water on the tops of these legs sort of between she's got like a big bottom Maybe do with squeezing that bone together just a tiny bit more. If you want, you can fill the gap as well there. Have I got any paste left? Oh, yeah. I have got some paste left. I left it in the bag. So just a tiny piece. Just don't go too far forward with it though, guys. It's more just to keep the bone together there. Kind of the top bit. Don't let it come far forward though, otherwise she will look like she's got a penis. Just gonna get some water under the body in here. Okay, and then we're gonna push down onto those legs. Can you see sort of pulling it down on there? Can you guys see that or is my hand in the way a little Yeah, you're on both two cameras at the moment. Okay. So pulling that down. Then if you want more of a dip, 
in the bottom of the back, just press in a little bit with your fingers. And I'm gonna kiss you pull down here. I don't want to pull that too far down because I don't want to lose a bum. Okay. And this is where, just try and bend her about a little bit. So you can see she's starting to get some more shape. The bum should kind of make her look like she's got a little bit of an arch in the back just because the bum sticks out. But you can press in more there if you want. Or you can nudge like shoulders back. Or if at this stage, you know, you want it to be twisting around a little bit, you can if you hold the bottom of her body here and so the top bit, her shoulders, twist. Like that, okay? Just gonna push this a little bit down here. Okay. Now this is where like I want to press it down a little bit, but I'm only gonna be able to press down to kind of so much. And I work it sort of between the legs just there. And then what I do is once the body's firmed, like what, how you saw me fill in the little crack on the other body, what we do is we take a little thin, tiny, tiny sausage bit of paste and we'd rub it on all the lines and creases, but we need these to be firmer before we can do that. So I'm just rolling this one over the edge. Now you can use the Captain tool, but I'm wanting a bit more pressure than what I tend to put on with the capped on tool so using this one on its side and kind of rolling down and I apologize the dog is really snoring now and the wetter you get the paste the more it kind of blends together but also bear in mind you don't want to put so much pressure on that you're gonna crush Bruce. these legs So she's very hippie as well. So if you don't want to quite hippy, if it's soft, you can push the paste in. If it's not, you would have to shave that down a little bit. I might be able to nudge it in a tiny bit. I quite like her with it, like a bit hippie anyway. A little bit booty. Okay. So I'm kind of just rolling that out to where I want it to go. If you want a um, line up her back, just gently put that in with your tool. You can use the rubber ended tool, or you can even use the um, wider end of the dressing tool as well for that. You might not even want to do that, it's up to you. Okay, usually I would put the head on next. So, like I say, this can firm up and we can neaten these edges once it's firmed. I mean, it's only going to firm up so much today. That's the problem that we've got sort of doing it in one go then what i'll do is i'll put the arms on afterwards so usually it depends what position the arms are going to go in but if i'm undecided how they're going to go then i'll add them afterwards and um, we've only got a rigid set of arms for this for this lady so um we might have to redo our arms otherwise she's going to be on no, 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 his own arms she's going to be like hey over here <laughs> Or the other one, I went with straight arms, but I kind of had them down. They don't always look bad straight. It just it depends what you, what the kind of expression is. Or do you call it an expression with your arms still? Kind of is, isn't it? Okay, so that can be set up because we've not decorated our heads yet. So that can set while we do a bit of work on the head. I think we're going to make a fairly simple on her face. And we might even do a closed eyes, but I just wanted to show you some of the ones I've done earlier so i forgot which were, which were the freshest ones that we made everyone <laughs> just okay. an idea on time we've been nearly two hours have we i said to rich it'll only be about an hour yeah i know <laughs> okay we'll do closed eyes but i'll just quickly show you then um so when it comes out of the mold it comes with this shape eye which you can either um indent yourself or you can even paint it white if you're gonna indent it you just push in so that you're kind of going around the edges or just inside the edges with your dressing tool. So this face has already started from You tell I've put um, CMC or Tylos. I can't remember if CMC or Tylos one of the two that I've used. They both do the same thing now. 
So you try trying to follow that outline. Now don't worry about it being neat in the middle. It's just so that I've got space to put a white bit of eye. And then the other option, I'm just gonna push this down a bit more. So Richard obviously thinks it's a better idea to give the dog a treat than have him um, snore. You guys might not think that when you hear him eating. Okay. Richard, did you save the stuff on the box so people can see? The other option, guys, is if you don't want to do that, you can use like all different tools that do it for you. So, um, like on this one, I use the tea look tools. They come in like two shapes. These are the small ones, so they do small and large. And you just press that in. Now, obviously, you can still see the line of the original eye, but it looks like it's off the top of the eyelid. So it says right and left. So you just press that in for right, turn it around, press it in for left. Let's, uh, let's have a go on one of these. Was that the, which is the freshest one? I can't remember which was the fresh one. These were the fresh ones, were they? They're still actually pretty hard. So, right. This is the slightly different shaped ones, guys. So I'm gonna line it up in my eye and I'm just gonna press it in. So can you see it just makes an indentation for me? It's a slightly different shape to sort of the eye that's already on it, but you know, I guess it gives you a different kind of face if you're gonna do that. That's, so this is if you're filling them in with white paste. If you're keeping the eyes closed, don't do anything with them. I'll just show you which others I use as well. The other ones that fit these mini eyes are the, so these are the Sylvia Mancini ones, and these are the extra extra small ones. So that one, there's three in a pack of extra extra small ones. I just pushed in there. Again, you can just about see the top of the other eye, but it makes a great eyelid. Shall I see if I can press this one in here to show you guys. But line it with the bottom of the eyes. Now, because she's firmed up a bit, it's not the neatest, but... So again, don't let them dry up too much if you're going to do that. If you've let them completely dry, then you're going to give them closed eyes. So closed eyes means we can put little eyelashes on the bottom instead. So let's just give her... Um, what should we give her? Should we give her some... No, we'll just go black eyelashes. I was going to say, let's go for a wacky kind of colour, but we'll just go black. So this is what I wanted my black pen for earlier, but because um, normally I just draw them on. Well, sometimes I stick them on, sometimes I draw them on. I'm just going to use some black modelling paste. But I've got all colours apart from black. I must have left the black one at work. But it's fine, so we'll knead up the black. So the black is quite crumbly compared to the other, the other colours. So can you see the black one is quite crumbly until I get a bit of sort of heat in it from my fingers. It's also very messy. I'm probably going to get colour on everything. She might end up with straight arms today, guys, just because of how long I've been online. I don't want you all getting fed up and bored. Okay. It's starting to look a bit nicer now as this black paste. It's typical, isn't it? Everything was too warm and soft before and now I don't have enough heat in my fingers to get the black one going. Okay, so let's give her some kind of blush actually. Just before I stick the eyelashes on, we're going to give her some blusher. So is, this is a pale one, I think this is dusky pink. Can I go for like much deeper pinks? Like this is this claret one would probably be nice on the other face. And I'm just going to dab that on, on the cheeks. Don't worry if you kind of get the eyelids a little bit as well, actually. Maybe even a little bit on the forehead, on nose and chin. And we could give her some freckles, but we could give them like unusual coloured freckles. So it matches with what's going to be on the body. So let's do that first. What colour do you reckon? Turquoise? Yeah, turquoise. Blue. I think it might have been turquoise we went for on the last one. These ones actually look quite cute with white freckles, but this skin colour is too pale to see the white freckles on so we're going to go for something really random like blue. So I'm just going to use, these are just edible pens guys. Of course if you wanted to do something a bit more realistic you could just use the brown pen. Just to recap, the pen's not actually edible. Um, no, the ink in them, sorry. When I say edible pen, I mean... I'd be impressed if you take a chunk of bite, bite out of it. You'd be impressed would you? Yeah. I don't think you would be impressed. <laughs> Um, okay, so I've gone up and I was a little bit with a, 
We're giving her quite a lot of freckles. No, I don't do that many, but it's fine. So at the moment, she looks a bit like she's got lurgy. But when we put them everywhere else in her body, it will look okay. I promise. Maybe she could have this colour lips. Or should she go for a different colour lips? Should she have pink lips? I have to explain what the leggy means. Germs. So, I'm going to use pink on the lips. Now, can you see, because I've used it a few times, it's starting to get a bit blunt. You can turn them around, but I don't know if I've already turned this one around or not. I oh, know I haven't. Okay, that's cool. So, if you turn the nib around, and actually maybe I have it a bit straight on the other end. So... If you're careful with your pens, they do stay nice and pointy. If, like me, you use them a lot and then you use them for bigger areas, they tend to lose the point a little bit. Go for. I'll mix it in with a different colour. We'll go for some aubergine with it. Why not? So I'm just drawing over that little lip area. Now, if you think the lips are not big enough, you could go beyond the lines of the lips to make that mouth a little bit bigger. Or if you prefer, you can just use um, the powder paints. So if your powder is mixed with clear alcohol or dipping solution to make paint. The other option is blending them with a bit of water. Okay, I'm going to swap brushes because that one doesn't have much of a point left on it anymore. So I have loads of really nice brushes but they get ruined <laughs> um, if they get put back nicely in my pots. Now this is just one of the Sylvia Mancini brushes that I'm using. So I'm just using a tiny bit of water to sort of blend the purple into the pink a little bit. I don't want to fully blend it, like I want to see a bit of sort of darkness just around the edge. Just watch your head if you can. Can you guys see that? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to take that as a yes Richard since you didn't respond. Okay, so. Oh, actually, well, let's take that water brush back because so we're going to put some water at the bottom edge of each eye. And what I'll do, guys, is I'll do more videos on all like doing different faces and things with the mold. But also, don't forget, like the, the bigger mold, I've got quite a few videos on using this one, but you can use exactly the same techniques, but obviously, just reducing everything in size for using this one. Okay, actually comes in handy just putting it back in the mould, doesn't it? Okay, this is hardened again. I'm going to take a, a fresh bit of paste out of my pot because I took it from the very top, so I'm just wondering if I've got some further in that's a little bit nicer to use. Because I haven't used the, this black pot for a while. It feels a little bit softer further down. So just make sure you reseal them properly, guys, otherwise they'll end up slightly drier. Like, they are still usable. If they're a little bit too dry, I just microwave them for a few seconds. Not very long, but just a few seconds, and it should bring it back to life. I just I can't be bothered getting up and going to the microwave. I know, that's very lazy of me. What colour hair should this one have? Because I feel like I need to do her eyebrows. I mean, draw her eyebrows on, but in the colour of whatever hair I give her. Something bright. Well, I was thinking maybe Tiffany hair colour. Maybe, I don't know. And maybe purple. Maybe she could purple. Okay, so for the eyelashes, I'm going to take a little bit of black paste, which is now stuck all over me. And let's put it in half. Also paste all over my knife. So what I'm going to swap to the little part, uh, part of my knife. I'm going to roll it nice and thin at the end. Can you guys see that? Let's do the same on this one. Those of you that have watched quite a few of my classes will have seen me do this a few times, I think, with the eyelashes. Sometimes we draw them on, sometimes we stick them on. We're going for sticking them on today because I very stupidly left the black edible pen at work. So we're going to put it along the bottom edge of the eye. Do the same on the inside. Don't worry about it being too long at the moment. We can trim that down. Stretch a bit when we put that one on. Okay. That big eyelashes. Well, they are normal. We are going to cut them down a bit. That's like Wolverine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them with a bit of an angle this way. And this is where if your face is very soft, it can cut through your face, so just be careful. 
or if the black is very soft, it kind of stretches. Usually I end up cutting it in a slightly different place on each eye. Okay. So can you see she's got bottom eyelashes now? And if you want to enhance like the colour on her eyelids a bit, you can do. Um, you know, if you wanted to say deepen it, picked up a bad brush for that. If you want to deepen it a bit colour wise, you could do let's pick up the claret. Do you know what I actually might do? Do you think we should do another part of the live where I can spend longer on the other bits of her? I don't know, what do you guys think? Watch your head if you can. Sorry. I'm trying to just go with slightly darker pink in the creases <laughs> on her eye. That might be too dark, I'm not sure what do you think. And back over with the paler one just because it kind of smooths the colour back out again a little bit. Or I think it does. Does she look like a riser colourist? Yeah, 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 they're good. Okay, that's fine. There's a few people taking the mick out of me saying, please tell me that as a dog and not Richard. I don't, I'm sure in dogs making some noises. Do you not hear him drinking really loudly? Yeah, all right. Um, so I was going to draw on the eyebrows, but I think I'm going to stick them on. Same way as we did the eyelashes but kind of the opposite way that means it probably doesn't mean it's the same way does it so a bit of water above each eye let's roll some little points but we start from the outer edge so we're going to start from the outer edge of the face bring it around to the middle and we're going to cut it off Fairly high up eyebrow, maybe we should take it a little bit lower down. And then we'll do the same on this side. Oops, if it, if it wants to stick, stick down. That was the dog as well, making that big sigh noise. It's had a hard day. He, a, he threw himself out the door yesterday and we thought he was paralysed. Um, he fell chasing a cat out the back door. And he literally lay there unable to move, didn't he? Yes, yeah, so we had an emergency trip to the vets. Yeah, then he started walking fine when we got to the vets. Okay, eyebrows are on. One eyebrow is a bit thicker than the other, but what I'll do is I'll just press it down a bit more so it matches. Okay, that's fine. She's got a head. So let's put this head on. So there's lots of things I want to show you for doing kind of lots of different ways with the heads and the body parts and stuff. So maybe we'll do like a second version of this one day. Or I could always just film it and put it online for you guys afterwards. No, we'll do it live again. a chance to do it. Um, but the thing is, you might have fit up with fairies by that point. Although we could turn them into someone else. Okay. So, who's shush? Ideally, you want to go wash your hands at this point. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put her head on. So she's got plenty of bulk at the back of her head. If you imagine where your neck goes, it doesn't come right to your chin. Like, you've got a bit of space here. And then your neck goes on. Can you see that, Richard? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So when I add a head to this, I need to make sure that it's kind of towards the back. This is probably going to be a little bit long. I can put it down if I don't want to come out the top of the head. If I'm not bothered about it coming out the top of the head, I can leave it. I'm going to trim a little bit off. Okay. It might still come out the top, but it's fine. So I'm going to look from underneath, and then I'm going to put that on there. So I'm going to push it on just a little bit first. Then I'm going to have to think about... Do I want her head dead straight or do I want to kind of tilt it one way or the other before I commit to pushing it down? So I think let's tilt it a little bit like that. Just a little bit and then we're going to press that down. And then I'm going to have a look, see how much chin. She's actually got a bit too much chin actually. So let's move us slightly further forward and do the same thing again. Okay, now... You might find that you don't like the height of the neck and that you want to trim some off, but I think I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. Usually from above, the neck looks shorter, and then when you kind of pick it up and put it to your own eye height, it doesn't look quite as short. She still looks like she's got too much chin. I'm actually going to move that again. Do you know what? I, I put it in the same place. So what happens, guys, is if you put it in the wrong place a few times, you end up with a massive hole. Just put some spare skin paste back in that hole. Let me go slightly further forward. 
probably just going to slide straight back in that same hole again. No, there we go. Okay. And if you're happy with it, you put some water between it. I'm just going to leave it for the moment, just in case I decide to do anything different with it. Okay. I'm going to, I am going to wash my hands just quickly because I want to do with some little pixie ears. Do I want to move my head back again? Do you know what? Sorry guys, this is, a, this is sometimes why I don't do lives because I change my mind all the time about where things are going. And then Richard's like, oh my goodness, so just get on with it. And I'm like, no, I don't want it there. I'm going to change where that goes. And I'm changing where it goes again. Okay, one last time. Has to be right now, otherwise the head's going to be like too far. Okay, yeah, there we go. I'm happy with that now. You happy with that, Richard? Yes. I don't think Richard really cares, to be honest. But um, <laughs> I'm happier with it. Looking good. Okay. So once this has time to set, we can put some paste between the head and the neck and kind of smooth it down so it blends in. Same for like this bit here and also for the arms. So I think, should we give us a, actually I'm not going to give a hair yet because I want it to set up a little bit. And then let's give her pixie ears. I'm just going to wash my hands. I'll just give one second. Richard, if you have a look for questions for I me. I will do. The other thing I'm going to do guys is give fairy rings as well. Now, even if I wait and do bits for bits to hard and do things in different sections, if I had the fairy wings, her back needs to be soft enough that I can push them in. So just bear that in mind when you're doing yours, guys. Okay, so let's move all these different faces and body parts out of the way for a second. Uh, skin tone. Oops, I've got the same colour skin as her face for her ears. She needs some pixie ears. I can't remember if the other one has pixie ears or not, but I feel like because she's a fairy, it should be. She's got pointy ears. Yeah. Is that pixie ears? Yeah, I guess so. Pixie fairy. What's the difference? I don't know what the difference is. So we're going for like a teardrop shape for her ears. These might be a bit too big. <laughs> I'm going to go a tiny bit smaller than that. And then I'm going to do another one. So I'll try and get two balls the same size. This is where really I should weigh them. But I'm not gonna. Okay. So let's roll our teardrops. And then what I'm gonna do is flatten them a tiny bit, not too much, just a little bit. And I'm gonna put some water on each side of her head. So sort of from eye height downwards towards that kind of jaw area. And then we're going to push these on. I'll just face it towards me a little bit so I can see where I'm sticking them. Sticking to my fingers instead of to her. Let me just put some corn flour on my hands. I lost her ear. I know it's still stuck to her. It's okay. It's still stuck to her. So I'm pressing them on. I am. Stick my fingernails in and I didn't really mean to. So what I'm going to do is stick the rounded end of this into kind of her ear and press it tight against her face. Can you see that one? I'm trying not to stick it against my finger. Sorry guys, I've got this face in the complete opposite way. Well, it is. It's weird, I can only work up one angle on one side and then I have to kind of switch angles. Her ears actually look quite far back on her face, so I might nudge them a tiny bit further forward. Just a little bit, so it's wet enough at the moment I can kind of maneuver them about a little bit. Okay. I'm just deciding what to do with arms, or whether we just give her... <laughs> just give us a new arms. She could be doing this. I feel like this is a good look for straight arms. Can you guys see that? I might do that. And because these are actually quite firm and our body's fairly soft, we can push them a little bit into the armpit. Okay, so. She's kind of... Like Tammy to your leader. Is that? She's showing her appreciation for the wildlife and nature around her. That's what she's doing with this expression. Okay. So this should, because the arms are fairly small, they should stay out on their own. Like they shouldn't start giving us an unusual
a bend and a dip. And can we see, like, we can see the seam between her shoulder and her arm. And again, if we give that some drying time, we can then go over that a little bit better and get rid of that. Whereas we could do it now, but I think it's better if we wait a little bit. Okay. And her legs are holding up, so that's good because what you're going to find is if you don't let these legs firm for long enough, when we're working on the rest of it, these could collapse. So just watch out for that, guys. Okay. So I feel like I want to show you guys how to blend it all, but then I also want to just put some felt tip pen on so I could show you how I decorated the other one. What should I do, guys? Move on to the next bits and show you how I decorate the other one with all the little dots. To be honest, she just has dots that kind of hide all the seams. Or should we wait till another day while this is dry and then fill in all the seams? What do you think would be easiest? I don't know. It depends on how long you want me to go on tonight or whether you prefer this to have time to set and then we do some more another day. I'm going to put wings in now anyway. So, guys, the wings... There's a little video on the side of the screen now. I mean, really, I should just wait to add the wings because I can get into the back better without the wings there. But I, I just get a bit over the top. I get excited about adding wings. So, <laughs> the wings. Hang on, let me just straighten them up a little bit at the end. There is a, just for anybody, there is a little video on screen. We have got a full length video on how yeah. to make these wings. So, I thought it would take me too long to make these wings in this video. I'm just going to straighten these are the ones I actually stole from another fairy. Is that is this something Peter Pan about? No, that's if, if you don't believe in fairies, not if you pull off the wings. Is this something about pulling off a fairy's wings? And it dies or something? I don't know. I don't think it's very nice to do it anyway. No, I know. Um, so I've cut the ends short, but these I do have a full tutorial on on my YouTube channel. Um, and they're just made with the felt pens, some gelatin and some wire. You need to decide what angle they're gonna sit on your fairy. Okay, so if she's in the glass dome, I'm not going to be able to just get them far back on her like that because the glass dome won't go over her. I would have to have them kind of coming around more to the front. So I would have to bend this bit of wire that way. And can you see it's kind of double pronged here instead of a single one? So these were twisted together to make sort of one entrance for the wing, but they were twistling a bit, so it was easier have two pieces because then it stopped the twizzling around quite as much and all I did was decide whereabouts on her back I want these to go and then I pressed this in you also have to make sure that the wire isn't sticking out to like the front of her body if that makes sense also we can fill in all the gaps um, once it's had time to set as well we can go over that with more paste I don't think she's going to fit in her little glass down with these big wings, you know. Yeah, her glass down is not going to fit on it. These wings are too big. Maybe if they came upwards. Should I bend them so they come upwards more? Yeah. So this is where when I'm adding fairy wings, I can make a bit of a mess because of all the holes that I'm putting into her back. So I've taken it out to readjust it because if I try and readjust it when it's in place, it's just, we'll try and adjust it. It can just create bigger and bigger, bigger holes on her back. Okay. So let's say, it's going to make it harder for me to put her hair on, so I maybe shouldn't have put these wings on, but I got a bit over excited, guys. <laughs> so a bit of water, and then if you just take some more of a skin full of paste, and we push that into the holes the best we can. Okay. Give that a good nudge into the holes. This is where I can tell the CMC makes it harder to use because it doesn't blend as easily. Should I just give her a bit longer to set, do you think? I might give her a bit longer to set, guys. Will anybody be very disappointed if I don't finish her tonight, though? 
but I think she does need drying at the same time. Yeah, I think it's going to make it a bit, bit easier, yeah. I'm just bending her wing a bit further forward, because otherwise that glass down. Do you want to pass in the glass down? We'll see if it actually goes on her. We've still got more wings and things to add and attach, but... I mean, she probably didn't need wings to be quite that big, actually, did she? And obviously, if you're not putting the glass down, guys, then it doesn't even matter. It does go on. Just. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Goes on like that with no more. Should we remove those wings and just go for smaller ones? They look quite nice curved. Yeah, they're actually pushed against the the jar there, aren't they? She's like really tightly put in there. Oh, decisions, decisions. What should I do, guys? Do you want me to leave the wings on? I think, yeah, a few people are saying like if we let, let us set a bit then we could re, re, yeah, then we reconvene. Yeah, nicely, can't we? Yeah, let's do that again. Let's, so we'll take these out for the time being. We'll give us some setting time and then we'll finish this another day. Uh, were there any questions that you guys asked that I didn't answer? Everybody's enjoyed it. Uh, okay. There's a few people regarding EU shipping. We've Ooh, been saying we're going to start, we've been saying we're going to start again for a long time. We actually had a meeting today and Fingers crossed we'll be back up and running next week for EU shipping. It's been a long, long time coming. Um, but yeah, we are getting there very slowly. But yeah, slowly. so we had to stop because um, when Brexit happened and we did everything we were supposed to, like we put all the documentation and everything that we were supposed to do and we were sending out like to like Germany, France, etc. Um, and Ireland. And the parcels were just all being returned to us. They weren't even making it to the customers and they were just returning everything. Um, and we thought we were doing what you were supposed to, so we, we weren't really sure what we were doing wrong, so it's just taken ages to sort out. So hopefully, fingers crossed, soon we'll be sending we'll to be EU good. countries again, yeah. Because um, we used to. Toadstool, they definitely want the toadstools, are we? Okay, we'll do a video with a toadstool one day. That should be quicker as well. Like, I'll do that on its own one day. <laughs> Sorry, the dog has seen the cat out of the window again. <laughs> I thought he would have learned his lesson after yesterday and nearly paralysed himself chasing it, but um, basically the sign of the glass he cut into it at least. Uh, a couple people oh, said, can they, see, oh. can they see the other fairy? Where did I put the fairy? I don't know, you put the fairy. So she's already in the glass dome as well. Really want to see. I'd like to put some little, maybe some little toadstools around this one or some flowers and foliage. On the other one, I actually. Um, I bought like plastic plants and stuff for work ages ago, so, and I had like a plastic glass, I have a plastic glass, the dome. A plastic grass mat. So the pieces of grass on this one are um, a plastic. Can you see, she just have like a bit of wobble to her, but but yeah, these come off like a plastic mat. These. Would you normally make them? But I was like, oh, I'm just gonna come off my plastic mat and stick them on. These are really tall, a toad stool, oh. isn't it? It's what? You did make the toad stools on that one. This one? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I used a mold. Oh, did you? Yeah. But the big one, you... Yeah. I don't have the mold anymore. But the big one was freehand, though, isn't but it? Yeah, this one's freehand, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it was easier to put detail on it if I were bigger as well, and then also my fairy could sit on it. But actually, it's good that we've not sat on it yet, because, I mean, it feels pretty firm, but if it has longer to set, then it's going to be more supported as well. Yeah, definitely. I think, Richard, if there's no questions, we should probably call it a day before Bruce starts um, <laughs> barking a lot, which he does. Uh, I was just trying to find an image to show... Um... Oh, don't forget, guys, fairy wings. I know I didn't show you them tonight. They are on my YouTube channel, and that is uh, a video just on the fairy wings. Because you see, some of them are more transparent than others, and um, I'll just show you a bit more about that on the YouTube video. And then, this is our new... If anybody that... Probably a lot of people have seen it, but obviously we've got a new, new class. got a new class. Uh, it's on the few, screen now. I think quite a few of you guys watching now have bought the class because I've seen your names pop up in the group for it. But thank you everybody that has been purchasing the dinosaur class. I know quite a few people have asked me which of the two dinosaurs is easier. Um, you got to get that. This do you think you're gonna be which is left or right? I don't know. Uh, the Stegosaurus I actually was quicker for me, but maybe that was because it was the second one I made that it was quicker. <laughs> it's always difficult to tell, but then that one you have to pre-make for some bits in advance, whereas the other one you don't really have to pre-make anything in advance for. So uh, I would say it's going to be up to up to you guys, really. Anybody that has bought it, what I would say is watch it through first before you sort of don't make it along at the same time. I would watch the video through, 
then you can decide which of the two dinosaurs you want to make first or if you want to adapt them and change them and also what you want to buy so there is an equipment list and everything like that in the class and I know a few people have messaged saying I want to know what to buy I'm going to buy that now before I watch it watch it first because you know you might decide you want to use different color pastes or sometimes they give you an option between using like fondant or modeling paste or mixing the two together so it's always best to watch the class first and then decide which things you're going to prefer to use before you sort of buy everything in advance if that makes sense but thank you ever so much everyone for buying that class I do appreciate that and hopefully you'll learn lots from it um because I don't normally do many kind of cake classes on here in fact that's the first cake class we've done on here I'm going to do a ganache class as well I've got so many actually lined up it's just finding the time to do them all, which is really bad, isn't it? I'm terrible with it. And then at the moment, I'm still trying to get a hold of uh, Tom Fletcher, you know, that writes the Christmas <coughs> So I've been busy trying to do that, and then hopefully, all being well, if we can get a hold of him, we can do Christmas Soros themed stuff for Cake International. And we'll be at Cake International, we'll have a stand there as well, guys, this year, like we did last year. And you'll be able to get the new models there, hopefully, as long as they come in time. Fingers crossed the coming time because I realise it's a little way off still. <laughs> right, guys, I'll leave you to it. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll let you know when the next one's going to be. See you later. Bye. Hi, guys. Welcome to part two of the Making the Fairy Facebook Live. Um, I hope you can all hear me. If you can't, let me know. Sorry for putting it on so last minute. You now, we did part one on Thursday. Was it Thursday we did it, Richard? Uh, Thursday or Friday. <laughs> I can't remember when it was. Um, yeah, and I meant to straight afterwards set a new date for it, and then I forgot. And then this morning I thought, if I don't do it today, I'm not going to end up getting around to doing it. So sorry for the last minute notice in um, in this. If you missed part one, it's still available to watch on the Facebook page as well. You can watch it there, and we'll get it on the on our YouTube channel as well. Okay, so for anybody that missed it, we have just been making fairy figures with the Gemma face and body model that I've done. And it's just really so that I could show you guys ideas of what you could do with it, but also how to stick the different body parts together. And we had stuck the pieces together, but it was quite warm and it's very warm actually again now, so, so I'm still gonna struggle with those bits. But I wanted it to have plenty of time to dry so that we could fill in the gaps and the seams easily. Whereas if I'd have done it on Thursday, I'd have squashed the figure a little bit. So she's she has firm back a little bit. So it is still warm in here, so she's not solid, solid, but she's firm-ish. So yeah, that's fine. Okay, so can you all hear me? And I'll I'll start. Can people hear me? We will see. We'll get some comments in 20, 30 seconds. There's a little bit we of a time. Have anyone, anyone watching yeah, to we, be got, we have got people watching. Um I am very sticky today, so it does get quite sticky on my hands when it is warm. So I have got some just corn flour in a little pouch there that I'll just keep sort of dusting onto my fingers. And we've got our other body parts as well out from the other day. So I did have these in a bag so that they wouldn't set. And then I didn't realize I'd, well, I stupidly put them in a bag with a lot of white modeling paste without thinking about the fact that all the white modeling paste was gonna stick to it. So this lady's got like little white bits stuck everywhere on her. I tried to get them off earlier. Okay, so a bit of water. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it onto one of the seams and we're going to take some more of the same skin colour that we used on the figure. So, Richard, are you on this camera here? Uh, yeah, one sec. Are we not in shot? Okay, I'll wait while Richard gets us a bit more in shot. So we're going up here. We're going to be doing the shoulder and around sort of the tops of the legs. One second. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, so we're just going to go around there a little bit. And then we're going to take a small piece of paste. I don't know if this is this in shot, Richard? Uh, yeah, you can see it on the camera, yeah. Okay. I don't know which angle we're on, so... Yeah. Yeah, so just a nice thin little bit. If it's too long, don't worry, it doesn't matter. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it up there and on that little shoulder bit. And then we're going to try and push it in. So you see I'm steadying the rest of the figure. And I'm pushing that into... A little gap so it's quite wet and sticky but that's fine i'm not going to need all that under there so let's just pull that bit off there can you just spin around a little bit towards that set okay can you guys see that so she's a bit messy on her back as well anybody that watched will see i tried to put the wings on and then decided that it wasn't a good idea to put them on straight away and took them off so she's a bit messy in the back okay so again here 
So can you see it kind of going into that gap? I'm just gonna, gonna use this to sort of pull the extra bits off that I don't need. There you go. And use your damp brush again to just keep going over that. And let's smooth it down again. So it's easier to do these bits when the other body parts are set. If it's all soft, you just end up squashing the whole thing. So can you see now that seam is less obvious than the one on this side? Can you see that? Just watch out because obviously it's a little bit wet now. So you're just gonna have to let that dry for a few minutes before you want to start touching it again. And we'll do the same on like this hip area here. So a bit of water in that seam. I mean, I'm using water, not edible glue for this because it's just gonna go really sticky if I use the glue. So again, we just want a thin little piece that we're gonna try and pop around here. Sticking to my fingers because it's so warm. And I'm just using the smaller of those Capton tools that I was showing you the other day. But you can use different tools as well. Sorry, it's very noisy on the main road. So you can use, like, if you've got these, you can use them, but you might be better sort of rubbing these up and down to smooth it out. So again, keeping us steady. So I don't want to knock her about too much. Can you guys see that spreading out now? Or is my hand kind of in the way? No, it's okay. So you can spend like a little while going over it nice and neatly as well. Sometimes if, if I've not got it quite smooth enough, if I just add a bit of water with a brush, it can smooth it out even more. No, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this at the angle I've got it held up. Mm -hmm. So this is where it gets a little bit trickier, where it starts to go into sort of areas that are a little bit more in a crease, I guess. So I'm going to go for a more rounded one for that. I'm just going to rub it a little bit off her leg there with my finger. The one thing you do have to watch out for, guys, is because this paste is now wet and it's getting sticky as I'm doing this, bits of fluff will get stuck in it much easier. So just be mindful of that, be careful of it. And you will see a little bit, it should dry a little bit better than what it looks like when it's wet. Okay. I don't wanna bring it too far down on the bum crack, otherwise she's gonna lose like a bum cheeks. We're just gonna do the same now on this side. I can smooth out that area there, but we're gonna be putting wings back on this bit anyway. I'll put some paste in, but we are gonna put some wings onto that area. So just watch where you're holding her now, because what you're gonna find is that you might put your fingers in the bits you've just done and then make it sticky, or then little fingerprints in it. So just watch out for that. Now, I feel like I'm sort of looking at it in the shadow. I don't know if it's the same for you guys. So I can't really tell what I've done very well because it's the lights on it at the wrong angle for me to be able to see clearly what I've done. So let's fill in these bits. Again, it's probably because I've used this lighter colour paste, actually. What I'll do is I'll fill this one in and then we'll, we'll go back to the other lady that we made. We'll stick her on the toadstool and we'll put her body parts together and we'll see if that's any easier for you guys to, to see. And of course, you don't have to do it all in one go. You could leave the... You could put, like, one arm, one leg seam on and then let it dry so that you know you're not putting your hands in it when you move on to the other side. Is your lighting made any difference? Yes, maybe. Well. And you can always as well, if you just put a bit of water on your finger, you can rub your finger over areas as well and that does actually smooth it off a bit. It's just that it 
can end up quite wet and sticky doing it that way. Sorry guys, I realise this probably isn't the most interesting of things for you to watch. So like there, where I just can't get in with the tool, I would just keep rubbing the bristles over that bit to sort of smooth it down a little bit. And just make sure the water you're using is nice and clean. And if you've got, if you're using too much paste to fill the gap, it will give you like it will stick out, it'll be more like a lump than just filling in that gap. So just watch out for that. Just have to get a bit of fluff stuck in there where it's wet and sticky. Okay. Now it's probably not gonna be perfect, but it's a cleaner, sort of join them what we had before. Okay. You can do the same with adding her head and neck together if you want. This is where I don't know if you guys will be able to see what I'm doing. You're going top down now, yeah. Oh, you're going to, I don't think you're going to see this top down. But we're basically going to put a bit of water across that join there. I'll do it the other side as well because it's easy to just go all the way around. Now you might find that actually because it's sort of hidden under a head that you don't even want to bother with this bit so you don't have to go with whatever you think's best. We're going to put this little bit of paste around the neck. Oops. I think it's snapped off but that's fine. Like can you even see that Richard or not? Mm, yeah. Yeah. So I just want to go all the way around. And pull it up. Oh, no pulled up more than I need, never mind, it's fine. We'll start and then we can add more in the bits that I'm missing. So it's a bit awkward is this one. And I'm swapping you see to this because it's better to get into that shape. Because it's still, like I'm not filling in a big gap. So the shape of this rounded one's gonna be a little bit better. I'm not as worried about cleaning it up at the very back because the hair's gonna cover it. But I know that at the front, it's gonna want to be nice and neat. I uh, just cut a shoulder that is a little bit wet, so I'm going to have to be careful of that. And you do want to make sure the head is set solid, otherwise it's going to pop off at this point when you're doing this. Okay, so I've pushed it round roughly now, and then I'm going to go back over with my brush and I'm going to use the brush now to smooth this into that gap. Now I am going to have to hold it upright guys because I'm going to have to hold her a little bit while I'm doing this. Like I said, the back bit I'm not too worried about. We're going to cover that up. Can you even see it Richard? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. I can't see what I'm doing with my angle. See. got a tiny bit of a gap. I'm going to leave it because it's it's enough for what I need it for. Um, but obviously you can spend ages and get it nice and neat. I know I say that about everything, don't I? I'm very, very, very warm now. Whew, okay, so we're going to give her some hair. And what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to put a bit of pink blush on her ears. So I'm going to use a bit more of the dusky pink that we used the other day. And I'm just going to catch the edge of her ears. Can you guys see that there? Yeah, you top down for that, yeah. Oh, can you see that top down? Yeah. Can you guys see that? Bring her a little bit glass yeah. Yeah. So, they don't have to be completely pink and red, but um, I'm going to put a little bit on the forehead as well. Maybe even a tiny bit on her nose, if I can catch the nose. And then, you can go on other areas with the pink as well, so that she looks a little bit less soft, flat in colour. So could sort of catch the feet a little bit, even the 
the knees, tiny bit on the hands, not much on the hands, so more catching the ends of the fingers, the elbows. Again, I'm going fairly light with colour, I don't want to put too much on. Now, I'd like to put a little bit, oh, aeroplanes get over as soon as we open the doors, on like our bum cheeks, but what I have to be very mindful of is that this now is wet, so ideally, if you've got time, guys, let that dry, and then you can put this rouged effect on. Like I say, it's not much. Does it show on camera or not? Yeah, this one now. So if you spin around. Yeah. I mean, it's quite a pale pink, this one, anyway, so it's fairly subtle. I do want to put some on her shoulders, but I think what I'm going to do is just hang on until... I'm going to put a little bit on her chest. Not much, sort of top of the chest rather than sort of down, lower down on the boobs. Yeah, I'd like to put some on her shoulders, but I need them to dry a bit more first. Otherwise, the powder's just going to kind of smear in them and look really sort of patchy and lime-like. Sorry guys, I realised I've Richard opened the door and the next doors are playing out in the garden, so you probably hear them quite a bit. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Sorry guys. Okay, so hair colour, she's got purple eyebrows, so she's gonna have to have purple hair, we might have to shut the door. I presume everybody watching at the minute is probably in England, um, so we'll realise that when it gets warm here, it just gets warm. Um, we, a lot of us don't have air conditioning because it's not often warm. <laughs> I realise like most people abroad probably have air conditioning, don't they? Like if you live in a hot country, um, yeah, we, we don't. Oh, that's it. I can feel the fan. That's better. But I don't know how noisy it is for you guys. I will when we put we're going to put the two parts of this video together when it goes on the YouTube channel as well, guys. And I'll cut out all the bits of me rambling as well, so you'll be able to just watch me making. Okay, for the hair, I think she's going to have short hair. And I'm just using the pre-coloured um, purple, what's it, is it violet this one? I forget what it's called. The, it's the it's Santino lilac. one again. I think it's one? lilac now. Oh, is it? I can't remember if it's violet or lilac, but they only do one type of purple anyway, so it's, you might pot it. That says green, that pot. Yeah, they're not in the, in the pot that coordinates with the colour. Okay, so I think she can have quite a bit of hair. So I'm just going to give it this amount. I'll tell you how much I've got, and then you guys know. Um, might be too much, it might be not enough, we're, we're going to see in a minute. So I don't use a set amount each time, it's very much kind of guesswork when I do it. But you, you get a rough idea when you're kind of holding it, if you think there's going to be enough or not enough, or generally I do. So we've got about 20 grams there. Okay, I'm going to put some corn flour on my hands again because they're getting a little bit sticky. Now I'm going to go for a bit of a fairy kind of short, not a bob, we'll just go for short style I think. I think I might do it similar to the, you know, the one that's over there, Richard. Could you fetch me the one that's over there? So, or we might just see how it ends up. We might just do it however it ends up. I'm going to roll it so it's a little bit thinner at the back than it is at the front, and I'm going to squash it down a little bit. Not the front, at the bottom end, sorry. This one's a very rough one that I did very quickly on the Saracino stand. Just thinking something a bit like that. Okay, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if it ends up like that or not, or if, if it looks. Sometimes I start adding it and it goes on differently, but it looks nicer differently, so yeah. sometimes we go with what I just think looks nicest. Okay, so she's got a fairly rounded head at the back, so I'm not going to need this to be super, super thick here, so I can press it down a little bit. Um, yes, yeah, so I can go a bit thinner. Can you see from the side? Am I on that camera now? Yep. Okay. Only because I keep showing that camera right. Um, if the head was flat at the back, so like these ones, for example, can you see they're flat at the back of the heads? I'm holding it too high up to be in shot. You're on this camera, yeah, that's it. Yeah, but you can see it. Yeah. I would have left the paste a little bit chunkier because then it could fill out the back of the head a bit more. But because this one's got a fairly rounded head at the back, I don't need it to be too thick at that point so I can press it fairly thin. And I'm going to put some water on the back of the head. If you want to use edible glue, guys, you can. I, I'm just usually happy with water, so it does the job for me. So I'm going to go just above the ears, top of the head. Don't bring it too far forward onto the forehead. Um, just in case, you know, you didn't want to stick it too far down her face. Keep where she is, because you're on both cameras okay, at the moment. Okay, so we're going to start on the back of the head, pressing it up and across, like so. And I'm just going to try and push it behind her ears, if I can. 
Now I'll turn it around in a second and you'll see, or you should be able to see, I think, that we've covered the join on the back of the head. Can you see that's about covered, I think? Mm -hmm. And in fact, what I'm going to do is, because she's got quite a lot of hair at the back of this ear, I'm going to cut, you're probably best on this one now because I don't think you're going to see elsewhere. I'm going to cut a little bit out here. Still a bit soft. Can you guys remember what I said in part one? If it's very soft, it kind of stretches rather than cuts, which can sometimes be a bit of a problem. But if I let this harden and then cut it, I'm not going to have the same flexibility for moving it around on her head. So I'm going to put a bit more water just above her ear now, and just slightly in front of the ear. And we're going to pull this round and down in front of her ear a little bit here. Okay. Can you see or not, Richard? Mm -hmm. Yep. So she's got a little sideburn kind of things going on on this one. So we'll see if we can do the same on this ear. I don't think you guys will probably be able to see where you're from that angle. And sometimes, you know, if it does stretch a little bit, it's fine. So we can use sort of the stretched bit as the... It's not, it's not a sideburn, is it, on the lady? I don't know. I don't know much about hairdressing. <laughs> okay. And then it gives us like this big fold. So what we're going to do is we're going to push that fold in a little bit. And then we're just going to use my modeling tool to just neaten it up a little bit down the side. And I haven't even checked if it's the same sort of height on both sides of her face yet. We'll do that in a minute. It is wrinkling a bit at the moment, and I think that's because it's quite warm in here. I'm going to do is I actually would have probably been better with some scissors and I don't think I've got any scissors to hand. Are there any small scissors which are in the kitchen? Sometimes I use a knife, sometimes I use scissors, but I think scissors are going to be the better option. It's just going to make it a little bit easier on this one for us. So let's start by cutting a little bit out this side and a little bit here. So we're going to remove like a triangle's worth. There like that. And I think this is how I did it on the other ladies now. And then from this point here, we're going to go down to create like a parting. We've got a little bit of a crease because the paste is so warm there. And then we're going to pull this around. I think she's got a little bit too much hair to just leave as it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little bit more out of this side here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Richard, can you not see? Yeah, Okay, can you guys see that there? I'm going to squish this down a little bit and we're going to pull this down and around like that. So she's got fairly big hair. I don't know whether to have it a little bit flatter against her forehead or not. Now, the only thing is, it has got so normally we can blend out these folds. It's very warm here today, so we might not be able to blend them out. But then sometimes if you put hair lines on, if you put hair lines on, um, it kind of hides these anyway. I'm just wetting it to see if we can rub it a little bit better by wetting it. I'm starting to get there a little bit more with some water on there. Just play around with this front bit now. And we can, I'm going to pull this bit so that we get like a little curved end bit there, I think. And then I'm going to just lift it a little bit at the front there, which is a bit more of a kind of quiff. Some little hairlines in. So let's go in here. And yeah, it's just definitely got like a bit too much cracking in there. Because just so the paste has got so warm. 
and then sort of crust it a little bit on the surface. downwards we're going to put in some hairlines you could even curl around the little sideburns if you wanted to in now coming the other way definitely not a good idea doing it in the warmth guys i know that sometimes you have to but if um can you see like the little wrinkles like it the elephant skin in a little bit it is just because it's so warm and like i say it's still wanting to set as well as it being warm and when there's any kind of movement then it causes the wrinkling and creasing on the top of the surface of it. some lines and I apologize guys it's crinkly it's easier and neater for me to do it if it's facing me but I don't think you guys are gonna be able to see it if I face it towards myself kind of thing let's try and get some more lines on here did have it. I forgot I was going to try the um, have like a tool that like a hair groove tool that puts you a few lines in and go actually that, I wonder if that might be a bit easier actually I think it would certainly be easier if you want to do the short kind of hair bits at the back I feel like you guys always get to watch me make things when I make a mess of them I'm just going to trim this down actually decided it's not going curly it's just getting cut I'm going to use this one for um, creating sort of shorter lines so it does like a few lines can you see in one go but where I sort of bring it off the edge it kind of leaves like sort of short blunter lines so it doesn't look like the hair is going to like a nice fine point but this one would be quite good for doing all the lines at the back Sort of under where it's going to be a bit longer. Let's swap to the smaller end, I think, so we can get in there a little bit better. Anywhere that's too much of a squeeze, just swap back to your Dresden tool for. Can you see this? Yeah. So even though she's been made a few days, you know, the head. And the neck, the, well, the neck is a very small sort of join, so you have to just be really careful because you don't want to um, move everything around so much that actually the neck snaps or the head becomes really loose. So, you know, just be mindful of that, be a little bit careful. Just trying to put those lines in on there with that one. I don't know what do you reckon with or without the uh, tool looks nicer. I guess it puts more lines in quicker for me. So she's got some hair on. I mean, we could even do sort of like uh, individual pieces. I'm just a bit more pink on her forehead. I feel like it's come off a little bit. And the shirt, she looks like she's got a bit of a grubby forehead. So I maybe had a slightly damp finger when I've touched her forehead. So, you know, we can make little individual pieces. So we could have like um, a little piece that kind of folds up at the back of the head. Kind of slots in here. Let's see if we can get it up my finger. Probably gonna stick to my finger instead of her hair. There we go. And then we'll just press it down the best we can. And let's just turn it around from the front and see what it looks like. So can you see? Spin it around a little bit. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Spin it a bit, but a bit more. Cool. Thank you. 
And obviously you can put as few or as many of those in as you like, but you don't even have to have those bits in if you don't want. You know, if you want the head to be more 3D, you could add extra pieces up here or into this front section. So I'm just going to roll some really thin pieces if I can. I'm going to put a little bit of water in this bit here. Let's see if we can stick these onto here. So you're going to push them so it looks like it's coming from that. And it's not a seam, is it? The hairline parting. And now let's put another one in. Oops. I can't keep hold of it today. Okay, just stay in place. So my plan was to put a few pieces of hair at the front, but honestly, I'm getting annoyed with the fact that I can't pick them up and drop in them. And you know, I have a bit of a play around, like, you know, do you want a loose one sort of here or coming across the forehead? I don't know if she actually needs a loose hair or not. We'll see what one looks like. A really small one just maybe up here. Let's see if we can pick it up with a craft knife. Since it doesn't want to stick to my fingers very well. So if we put it in that joint and then we'll bring it around this way a little bit. Do you think or do we not think that looks alright? Just look silly. You spin it to the front of the camera, can it? Do you if she needs it or not? See, I haven't put her any hairlines in at this side. Does she need them or not really? No, it looks good. I mean, with things like that, you can have a bit of a play around and put as many or few pieces on as you want, guys. That's it. Let's feel if she has actually said the one good thing with it being dry, uh, dry, warm is that she has started to dry now on these bits. So let's give her a bit of pink on her shoulders. Yeah, for some reason. That lighting down that corner is quite dark. I don't know why. Well, it's because the light's coming from here. So if you're seeing from this angle, everything's in shadow. So let's get a bit of pink onto the shoulders. Can you see that there? Yeah. I've gone quite heavy with it, so. Probably like way heavier than I needed to go with that pink, but it's fine. Right, a bit more pink on the nose, guys. I'm going to put a little bit on the calves as well. I'm just randomly putting pink on, but it just means like the colour of her looks like far less flat looking than what it was doing before. Beth says, if you get warm, an ice pack in your lap will help cool you if you have one. South Floridian style. Yeah, I need to do that. We need some ice packs in our freezer. We do need to get something like that. Okay, so on the other one that I had, she isn't wearing clothes, she just has dots. So, should we do a matching dots or not, Richard? The other one has blue dots. Yeah, me too. Oh, we've not added the wings yet, but we can add the wings in a bit. That's fine. These kind of... Um... So, she was kept in the shop over winter and it was really quite cold. And because it was cold, um, the figurines got a little bit damp. So, the pen kind of bled <laughs> into the paste a little bit. Which is why her eyes look so weird and kind of misty rather than looking like nice clear defined eyes on this one. So, you know, just watch out where you're storing them. Don't store them anywhere too cold because the pen can kind of seep into the paste if you're not careful. My others where they've been kept dry are fine. It's not happened to them once. It's just the ones where they got a bit cold. Okay, you can move out the way again. Thank you. Okay, so... I feel like she needs a bit of a dark colour in her roots as well. I'm gonna use the sky blue pen. And what I'm gonna do is you'd probably be best from above for this, Richard. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna kind of draw into that parting, making the colour a little bit deeper in there. Can you see it from the top view or not? Yeah. I'm bringing it kind of down a little bit into the purple of the hair. Not too much, just a little bit. Oh, I have to watch out where it's wet because should have really let it dry before doing this bit. If it's wet, it will ruin the pen. The pen won't start giving out ink as much as what it was doing. So just make sure your paste has a bit of drying time. Okay. Maybe a little bit at the end of that. 
um, also the same in this front bit here. So we're going to want to add, although it's probably a little bit wetter than I meant to do this bit. Let's see what we can get on there. Just pick up a little bit, sorry. Sorry, I'm concentrating. <laughs> Okay, so we've just put some blue in there as well. And if you take a slightly damp brush, you can then run that over the pen and blend it a little bit more. So instead of it being as harsh, a sort of transformation from blue to purple, it'll just make it so that it blends out a little bit smoother. If you want it blending out smoother, if you want it sort of a little bit harsher looking in the roots, then you don't have to do the blending out. Go with whatever you like the look of best. And if anybody's wondering, this brush, it is actually a really nice brush, but if you do get these ones, this is a Sylvia Mancini one. I feel, is this the large drip brush or something? Yeah. Called? I can't remember what it's called. Um, just look after them. They are nice brushes, but you do have to look after them. Like, don't leave them in your water pots because you will wreck the bristles. Okay, let's just pull that colour around a bit more here. Is my hand in the way of what I'm doing? No, you're okay. Could even add a bit of blue to the eyebrows if you really wanted. I'm not sure if it needs it, but I'll put it on anyway. So just a little bit in the inner corner. And then just blend it a tiny bit. If you can. Okay, so what colour dots should she have, do you think? Should we let the uh, viewers vote? Well, I've got okay. it can be purple to match her hair because I've got the lilac pen here, I've got the sky blue pen here, I've got the turquoise pen here, I've got the eggplant one, I think the eggplant one's a little bit um, dark. Uh, actually, both the purples are quite dark. Let me show you one of the eyes. Yeah, let's practice on a scrap it because then it gives us a better idea. Let's see what colours. Even the pink ones are actually quite dark. Um, green might be too close to the colour of grass. So on the other one, uh, white actually looks quite nice. So I, I was thinking like on this lady, we might put some white dots. But this one, the, the paste is too pale for the white pen to really show up on. I don't know what colour do people think. I mean, she could have more than one colour, couldn't she, really? She could have a bit of an assortment of dots. Might be quite nice. I think I'm Like a one. rainbow. Yeah, well, I mean, I haven't got every colour here for a rainbow, <laughs> but we could we could put a few colours on, couldn't we? And obviously, it's up to you whereabouts you want to put the dots as well. I normally, if they're wearing, like, a bikini and I'm not having to cover, like, where nipples and crotch would be, I would tend to put, like, dots in places where you get freckles. So across sort of the top of the chest sort of the shoulders, maybe a little bit on the sort of the, the legs, even the arms, but on the fairy ones, I've con concentrated them where they might need clothes, if that makes sense, without having to give them clothes. Okay, I don't know if anybody came back on the dots, Richard, so I'm just going to add dots uh, here. Vicky says turquoise. Oh, I forgot. That's the first one. That's... Here. So that's what the turquoise looks on it. So the turquoise is quite dark, or quite bright. The lilac, can you see, is quite a dark purple. Eggplant again is a dark one, it's a more ready purple though. Sky blue, sky blue on the it because it's so small, it looks very similar. There is a difference in color, but when it's so small, you don't sort of see it very much. So, we'll look at the pink one, I think I might be running out of. So, we'll the pip says pink, for a different one. no, I think I'm running low on ink in that one. So, I might oh, yeah. To, yeah, we can try it and see. Orange is nice and bright, but um, you can, can tell I don't use that one as much. Can you use other things as opposed to fractal pens if you wish? Yeah, it's just that I have them to hand and they're always, like you can see I'm drawn over something that's dark with that and the pen has absorbed my colour, meaning now my yellow is not as nice and bright, so don't do not do that guys if you've if you got them. That's called yeah, I just, do you know what, they're always next to me and they're just really handy to kind of use, so I like to use them for things just because... It's quick and easy and it's less messy than me sort of mixing up paints and things, but you can obviously use, you can use the edible paints that are pre-mixed as a liquid, or you can use like your powder colours and mix them. And of course, you don't even have to add dots. I'm just going for easy options. Could you add stripes? Oh, <laughs> I'm not going to, Richard. Okay. Um, okay, so. Should we try turquoise and pink? 
We'll see. We'll see what. We'll see what There's all the colours in the rainbow being said. Now, and the rainbow. I can't remember. Um, can you guys see this? Uh, you're on the corner camera at the moment. So I don't have too many on at first before I do like a few different ones. But they're a good way to hide, you know, if you've got a join or a seam. See, we could have like. In a freckles, it'll only be the turquoise. So we could have freckles on the arms that are this colour and then go sort of rainbow colour on our other places. But yeah, just because it's got many bits nice and easy for me to just kind of dot on with. If that makes sense to everyone. That's up to you if you only want a few or if you want to go, you know, full hog and put loads on. I usually carry away and add way more than probably what looks nice, but I enjoy doing this bit, so there we go. Um, I was going to ask Richard to turn on the other one so I could see where the freckles go on the other one. So keeping them just so always in certain areas. Yep. Thank you, Richard. So you don't have to evenly place them. You just spin the leg around a little bit toward the camera, that's it. I mean, I don't want her to look like she's got some sort of skin disease, but, no. Towards that way, did you say or not that way? No, that's good. Would she have any on her ears? I have freckles on my ears. Is that quite unusual, though? Mm. She's getting some on the tops of her ear. I don't know if you guys can see that. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Am I the only one that has freckles on my ears? Does everyone else have them on there too? They're coming out a lot more now, mine, and now it's uh, warm up. Okay, I'll put a couple more across the chest. So I told you to get carried away, don't I? And I am going to put some sort of a little bit heavier on where, if you would imagine, like um, bikini bottoms to go. Be like an exact sort of bikini bottom size and shape they can kind of come out a bit more sparse so they can come it just looks like i'm covering our head to toe in them to be honest doesn't it it's definitely coming together now now i don't want to put too many on the back because when i put the wings in if we have to fill in the paste at the back again like if we if i make several holes and make a mess i'll have to fill it back in and then all that's going to happen is the pen, when I sort of rub it down with the water and stuff like you saw me doing earlier, the pen will just bleed everywhere and look really mucky. So we'll keep the back free from dots at the moment, apart from some down the egg bomb. I wonder if I can turn this around, actually, the more than this, if it might be. Did I turn this around yesterday, the pink one? Uh, I don't know. Do just explain what you're doing for anybody that doesn't so, have a clue. Yeah, sometimes like. It, I think it might just be that I need more ink because I've used this one a lot. But sometimes if, if it ends up really frayed, you can turn the nib around and because it's the same on both ends of it. So if you swap it around, you get pointy end. But I think it's not so much that I've lost the point on this one. It's the, it's the, it's run out of ink because I've used it a lot, this one. Used to, um... Yeah, it's not really giving me much. Used to what, Richard? When you were at school, you used to lick uh, felt tip pens when they were out of ink to make them go further. Um, well, I, I know my mum used to. Like, that one's ready for the bin. I have. And um, people always ask me how long these last, actually, guys. Um, if the video isn't an advert for out pens, by the way, it's just seeing that it really depends how much you use them. I can tell, like, I use the pink one a lot, and that's why it's it's run out. Some of them naturally seem to be like a wetter colour pen than others. Sometimes don't they? Like some of them come like really, really wet. I always thought the dry, the white pens are a lot drier than the other colours. Mm -hmm. We'll go with the purple or the eggplant. Yeah, the, the white ones are not quite as sort of wet colour wise. And for anybody, uh, Francis, yes, as soon as you finish work, this will be available to watch back on Facebook. Yeah, and you'll be able to sort of um, fast forward rewind forward. it, yeah. fast forward it, and stuff as well might be a bit more helpful but you have to sort of watch me in real time and all the uh, yeah it'll be on our it'll be in the the main facebook page uh but we'll also 
in our Facebook page, if my memory serves me right, there's like a little lives button at the top of it. If you click that, that just takes you to all the Facebook lives we've done, which is a quick and easy way to find anything that's done live. Yeah, I didn't know there's a live button. Yeah. So I'm just dotting it on. And like I say, try and concentrate on the bits you want to cover, but then also you can just bring the odd one. Oops, not too high because we don't want to get where the wings are, but so, I mean, I don't, I don't want an obvious line on mine. You might do on yours. You might not even want the dots on at all, so, you know, go with whatever you like best. You're liking the dots, aren't you, Zoe? Well, yeah, I do like the dots. And I mean, you can use, like, if you're using powders, you could use, like, them, like, the sparkly or pearlized powders. I was going to say I could try that on the other one, couldn't I, at some point, but I don't think I've got any clear alcohol or different solution home with me to paint with. But yeah, you know, like, if you wanted a nice sparkling one, that could work quite well on it. It's amazing how just like um, the little bit of paste to cover the seam which is quite a quick and easy job but it makes a massive yeah. difference. In fact, I've looked, I forgot I had the shell macro ones which I've got a hint of colour. I might just put a tiny bit, I'm just checking I've not got colour in this brush. I might just put a tiny bit of this on a hair. See if we can give it like a nice... Oh, I was going top down. ...sort of pearlised finish. I don't have to fully cover the hair but you know like where you would get like a nice sort of high... not highlight but shine where the like hits your hair does that, I don't know, does that show on camera that it's a bit yeah yeah it's gone shiny realized. so this one's got like a hint of blue colour was it yeah hint of blue in it anyway I've not seen you use these for a while I used to use those ones no, quite I a lot I the mermaids a lot I'm terrible if something's put away I can't be really bothered getting out I'm too lazy I'm terrible for things like that aren't I Richard I you can't, if you can't see it, you don't use hand. it. Yeah. That's why I don't like to put my things away. <laughs> that way I'll, I'll get more use of them if I never tidy up. Oh, is that the excuse? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I don't know how well that does show on camera, but she has got like a nice bit of her eyes kind of finish now to her hair. Okay. I don't know, what do you reckon? Do you think she needs more colour? She did, I think she would look nice with a bit of pink, but that pen has run out. I don't know, I've got another pen at home. I'm just having a quick look guys to see what I can pen but I haven't. I've got red but I think red might be a bit too much. Should we try the other purple? Which one? Did I use this purple or the other purple? Used eggplant yeah. before. This one's quite dark though. I feel like it doesn't look as nice because it is so dark. Like she needs something a little bit brighter. Always add to it afterwards, can't we? We can always go back and another day add pink to her. I definitely think it makes a nice difference having like the shoulders and the knees and things with that bit of pink on there. Okay, so let's give her some wings. Is there anything else I feel like to do to just, her body? Uh, do you want to just do a quick full 360 on the front camera? Is she What's missing that? anything else from her body, do you think? Well, that's good. What do you reckon, Richard? Does she need more things adding or not? Uh, well, aside from the wings. Yeah, so we've got her wings. This one's got some little white spots, which is quite cool. Yeah, can you remember what I said about the white spots? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> can the rest of you guys watching remember what I said about the white spots? So she's got darker skin, so the white pen shows. Ah, uh, yeah. And this one, her skin isn't dark enough, so I could put white dots on there, but you're not really going to see them. Okay, I could put them on point. this one, and they would, they would actually work really nicely on this one, but that one, we're not going to really see them. So it's That's a good point, you see. Okay, so she's got some wings. So last time I tried adding the really big wings, which I do really like, but I don't, I was putting her in a glass jar and these kind of got in the way of the glass jar. And if you didn't see me watch, didn't watch me make these, I didn't actually make these in part one. These I've got a video of online on YouTube. So these are gelatin wings with white. There's a little. But I do have a video on how to make them. On the screen well. now. You say if you look to it it's a very sped up version but obviously oh, okay. you've got the full so the, video the full video um at sort of normal pace is available to watch on the youtube channel which is probably going to make it a bit easier for you uh, and again i've used the pens that you don't have to use but i use the pens to sort of draw the detailing on them and i suppose you could change like the colors and things you know like if you wanted different colors on those wings i was going to say oh, pink would be nice but pink is not going to work is it for us <laughs> 
but can you see I can just draw a little bit of this onto there I know I'm not doing this very neatly guys but can you see it just starts to change the colour of the wings if you want to change the colour of the wings let me just make this one match a little bit now it's a bit dark and heavy isn't it this colour so it's probably a bad move but it was more just to show you guys you can you know change the colours you can use your powders to colour them but what I just want you to be a little bit conscious of is that if I wet these to paint on here it can dissolve my gelatin that I've made them with so just be really careful if you are putting anything wet on them okay and the powder because this is quite dry the powder won't really stick very well it might stick where I've put the no it doesn't stick I was going to say where I put the pen if the pen is still wet but no it just, it just doesn't stick because these are now dry so you just have to wet that paint with a wet paint. Okay, am I making sense, guys? Okay, so let's stick these little wings in. And is there a set height on a fairy where the wings would go? I'm not sure if there is or not. Uh, you're on the corner camera at the moment. Okay, so when it goes in, guys, I want you to have a think about what angle it's going to be at. So is it going to stick straight out or are you wanting it to bend around a little bit like that? You want to really bend it in position before you stick it in because, so like this, at an angle. Because once it's in there and you start bending it, you're just going to create massive holes inside of which you don't want. So let me try and just bend those to similar kind of angles before that goes in. Can you see that? Mm-hmm. Okay, and then let's push these in. I think I'm going to go about here. Just check as well because if your fingers are filthy, you're going to then still make a bit of a mess. What I also want you to check, guys, is. Hang on, let me just concentrate on pushing this in. The length of this wire here that's going to stick into her body, you see this bit here. Check that isn't longer than the width of the bit of the body that's going through. Because I have before pushed them in at an angle. And it's come out it's kind of down under a rib cage because this has been a little bit too long so be very mindful of that i'm going to leave a tiny bit of a gap between the wings not too much of one i'm going to try and put them in at the same height and the same angle it doesn't always end up quite the same height and angle okay there we go sometimes they want to twist a little bit as well that's when i separate the wires i don't know again if you guys were watching the other night, I have to stick that one a bit firmer. Do you remember me saying that these were twisted together? I untwisted them so they're stuck in, in two places, and the reason for that is that it can't twist easily. Whereas if I have them twisted together, like I just have with that one, the wing can easily twist around. Okay, so let's work out where we're going to put these ones. So that one, can you see? It's got two little prongs. I might mix that back into one little prong. Now, would you have it coming out the same place? You wouldn't, you really. Obviously, I don't know much about actual fairies, <laughs> how it works. What do you mean you've never seen a real life one? No. Oh, sorry. Hmm. Who brought you all your pocket money when you were your teeth money? Oh, well, they do that when you're in bed. Not awake when they come. There we go. That one's in. Just tidy that up a little bit there. Just punching them back in. Okay. So I did have I do have like quite a few bits of pieces of wing, so if, you know you could put loads of different shaped bits of wing on. And they all looked nice together when I had the big ones on, but I think we're gonna go off just small on this one so that she fits in her little glass cage, okay? Cage. Obviously I'm really nice to my fairy that she has a cage. Are you on both cameras at the moment? Okay, let's see if we can stick this one in. Trying to bend it to where I want it to go, guys. And the reason this one's harder to push in as well is the wire on the wings is quite. Oh yeah, so the wires. It's a little bit harder for me to push it in because the wire on the wing is actually quite thin, so it wants to bend a little bit as I'm trying to push it in. Now, if it's not too messy, don't worry about tidying it up because you can make more of a mess. If you're thinking, oh no, it's definitely too messy, you can always just put a tiny bit of paste on the back. It's actually not too bad. I would normally just leave it 
as it is, but just so you guys can see, we can just add a little piece of paste on there. But just watch out because obviously you're going to start to see the lumps and bumps a little bit. But you might find that actually by adding an extra little piece, it stops the wings from moving around as much and that they'll set a little bit firmer in that. Once it's dry, if you then want to add any dots on there, we can do. I definitely should have added purple to the wings though. Now I feel like she's missing something. I don't think she is. I think what it is is there was so much decoration on the other ones on the base that made it look a little bit fancier, but I can always, so the base was just done by jabbing. It's just polystyrene in this one. Cause obviously this one's not going to be eaten. It's not going to anywhere. And for it to be even displayed, it's just polystyrene in there. I would advise maybe making her on a thin piece of polystyrene and putting a cake card underneath rather than putting your wires directly into a cake. Um, but it is up to you guys. You see she's not like the sturdiest of figures. So I wanted to show you how you do make them stood up, but I mainly used to advise people to have the figures, if they had like thin legs like that, to have them as sort of a separate piece that they could put on the top of the cake once you've got it to its destination and it can be easily removed or to sit the figure down because it's much sturdier especially transporting it if that figure is sat down because like i say you know you can see she's got movement and if she was stuck straight into a real cake the cake isn't as firm as this and she's going to tear through so that is something to just watch out for guys when you are doing them on your cakes let me move this out of the way um yeah you can i don't think i've got a big brush actually just rub a bit of colour powder and a diff different green onto your grass effect once it's had time to firm up. This has firmed up. I thought I had a big um I don't have a big brush that I've got. This one will do. It's it's not quite as big as what we'd normally use, but it'll do. Have we got any kitchen oil, please, Richard? Just if, if I stick this lady together. I won't finish sort of them fully because I didn't I realise I haven't actually just finished a head um, I'm going to put some kitchen roll down because if I get this all over my mat and then I start with the other lady, you know, she's going to have to have green dots or something on her to cover up the fact that I've made her green by accident. And the other lady, I think we're going to set on toadstool. So I won't completely finish the other lady, I just want to start putting together her body parts a little bit. Just so that you guys can see that you can play around with the postures, like it doesn't have to be stood up. Stood up is definitely the hardest position to do. And I don't know how many of you guys watched my video of me making Mel from Arcane. I love that program. Um, but she's a stood up figure. And I did her over quite a few days in different sort of parts so that she would have time to dry. But that's over on my channel as well. What film did you watch last night, Zoe? I watched Sonic 2 last night. Sonic the Hedgehog. When's his birthday? Twenty-third of September. I know it's soon because No, it's not September. Uh, June. I was gonna say it must We're be soon because you guys have been <laughs> prepping a video for it. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so and it doesn't have to be, you know, everywhere that you're adding this colour. A bigger brush is sort of nicer because it just catches the edges, the bits that stick out a bit easier than the smaller one, whereas the smaller one kind of pushes it into the cracks and creases more than what I probably want it to go into. I'm going to concentrate on getting it sort of darker around the bottom edge rather than all over. And then at some point in the future, I'll probably give her like some greenery, some foliage. Like I say, on that other one that I have, um, it's, it's actually just a plastic plant. It's actually a plastic grass mat that I had that I must have bought for like background for, for in the photos when I was taking photos of things. I used to put like this grass plastic mat in the background. And I cut it up until I'll stick some plastic springs of grass on it. But like I say, these ones are not being eaten. So if you don't put grass on your cake, make sure it's made out of like modeling paste or modeling chocolate or flour paste. Something edible. Okay. So that's just really so you guys can see sort of what it looks like with little bits of color. Like I say, guys, you can spend much longer than I am doing, neatening it all up and making it look nicer. I know, I know that in these videos, I never really spend long enough neatening them and getting them tidy. And when I sit on my own doing it, it is different. Like, it, you know, I can come back to things. I can spend much longer. It is always a little bit more awkward in a Facebook Live because I'm conscious that you guys are watching and you don't want to watch me in silence for half an hour while I'm just, just a tiny, tiny piece while I'm going to try and get it exactly as I want it. 
so I'm afraid you, you don't always get to see me do it as neat as what I probably should so yeah I'm sorry guys and a bigger brush definitely would be better for this uh, I have a message yes um, for anybody that's watching this video in our community group which is Zoe's Fancy Cakers I have been told that Emily has set up within guides there's a section where our Facebook lives are Okay, There's yeah. also a full equipment list in oh, there yeah, as well. I was going to say, Emily said something about it now that you set up equipment lists. So if you've watched a video, it should tell you everything that you used in that video. But yeah. But we've only just started doing it, so it might not work for backdated ones. I was thinking as well, I might um, redo some of the. I need to wash my hands. Some of the old Facebook lives, guys, that disappeared. So for a while, a load of videos vanished off our Facebook page, and I don't know why they vanished. Um, did we get them back, Richard? No. Did we not? No, we didn't. So, I can't, can you remember which ones they were? I know, I, I I've know got a list. I know what you guys were asking. Yeah, we have a list of them. Yeah, because we've got the shorter versions of them on our channel. Not on Facebook, though. But quite a few of you guys said you preferred watching the, the live one, even though it was watching it back, because it was kind of in real time. So I'm thinking I might redo one of those, maybe, or a couple of those with the dinosaur ones. I can't remember. Well, like I said, I have got a list of them. Uh, okay. You can do them enhanced. I can do them. You should have had practice already because you've done them once before. Well, and it doesn't mean that they're going to be any better now. Okay, so. Hang on, bear with me. And actually, did you guys want to watch me do a toadstool? I'm not going to do it in today's Facebook Live, but I was thinking we could maybe do a video of doing like the toadstools and stuff one day. I feel like I want a bit of colour on the bottom of it, but I don't know what colour. Should we put some pink on it? Put pink on everything there, don't we? On the toadstool? Yeah, just on the bottom edge. The toadstool right? looks nice. Is this because you saw your toaster last night? In Sonic, yeah, there was toasters in Sonic, wasn't there? Um, I don't want to use the green brush otherwise. Well, I suppose, I mean, I suppose I could make it a little bit green at the bottom. I don't know why I feel the need to now brush some colour onto this guy's while you're watching and it's probably not interesting, but it's just so white and bottom that I felt like I needed something. There we go, it's got a tiny bit of green on there. I've also got more than a tiny bit of green on my fingers, meaning she probably is going to change colour now. So remember, these are the same body parts. These ones have got wire in. These ones haven't because this one's not going to be stood up. It's going to be sat down on our toadstool. We just need to decide now, you know, which angle she's going to be sat on our toadstool. And if my toadstool is going to be strong enough to hold her up. I don't know, what do you reckon? Which way do you think she should go? Should she go in the direction that the Toadstool is. Which way is it less prone to break? So she could even have her um, machine this way. Are you guys looking from the front on uh, Yeah, from the front of the way. So we could have them like that, so one's tucked behind the other. We could cross one over the other, but because it's not very flexible, her hip sticks out quite a lot if I do cross one leg over the other, so she has kind of really wide hips. I don't know, what do you reckon? It does look nice crossed over there. It does. It Can sometimes you? doesn't always work when I am. Um... No, we, we can try it crossed. Let's try it crossed. Can you shave a bit off her legs? Can I? Shave a bit off her leg? Yeah, we could take a little bit off up here to make it fit in a little bit closer. So it's a little bit guessing. But you top down at the moment. If it's a little bit softer, it would be a little bit better. Um, and then let's see if that kind of fits in there better or not. Just get toward you a little bit. With me, yeah, that's it. Just checking, I put them on the right way. <laughs> the big toe, I know I've done the wrong way around, Richard. <laughs> oh no, now she's got like a massive chunk missing out of her. Oh, so guys, the big toe goes inwards, so her legs actually went that way around, and I put them that way around because, like I said, today nothing is working for me, <laughs> everything's going wrong. And I paid no attention to what I was doing, so it should have gone like that. So she's now missing a huge chunk from her hip. I'm not convinced it's just going to stick back on either. We could try. She could have dots to cover that up, I guess. I'll leave that to sit on and then I can always fill in that little gap. I'm still going to do the same thing, I can't even put it on the wrong way around. Let's go that way. I think. 
when she's on display, she's just going to have to face so that the hip is away from whichever angle you're looking at now, I think. Okay, so we're going to stick that on there. I'm going to put a wire in, but I'm not going to put the wire in just yet. I'm just going to wear under each bum cheek and in between, sort of where the legs will touch. So that's got a bit of time to be sticky. Now this is where if you wanted, you could swap to glue or swap piping gel. And now I think her body that we made before is going to be a little bit too hard to use for this one. So, so we'll make her a fresh body. Like I say, on this one, guys, I'm not going to fully finish like the figure. I'm just, it was more so you could see positioning in different ways. She might not even have arms, this one, but she's going to have legs and torso for definite. And I haven't finished her head, so I don't want to stick like a head on her at the moment. And this paste has got CMC in, so I know you guys were asking me about the CMC in part one of the video, and I said when it's really hot, it's best to kind of add it, because otherwise the paste just becomes so soft. The only thing is, because this has not been sat a few days, the CMC has really had time to kind of work, so it's now harder for me to knead it. I think I might have screwed up her arms, didn't I, last time, because I said they were going to be now good, set solid, like we needed them to be a little bit flexible. Flex. But yeah. Now I should weigh it, I'm not going to, it's, in the body it's 9 grams of paste, we're just going to put in this amount and see, see if we had enough or not enough, we can cut off extra, like I say, you can cut off the extra but just be really careful doing it because when you do cut off the extra you have to be mindful that you're not cutting through the mould itself. Also much harder to cut because of that seam see isn't it? Okay. And if you guys remember to get the edges slightly rounder, we're just gonna push that in. Like that. Okay, I realise that again I haven't spent much time getting this one nice and neat at all. Okay, and we took this one out using a cocktail stick. You can if you give it time to set properly, you can pop it out without a stick or a wire in it, but it's easier if I do it this way around. So let's try and prise it apart a little bit and then lift. Okay, a little crack in the boob there. So let's just pop her down a second. Let's try and get these legs, these broken legs, on in place. Do you know what I did? I, what is wrong with me today? Look, I put the water on the outside of a hip instead of the other side. Oh dear, it's hot weather. It gets to me. Uh, only a few days to go to the weekend. I think there's quite a lot of days to go to the weekend. Okay, so we're going to put these on here. I'm going to try and put it up near the thickest part of the mushroom. I don't want to have it too close to the edge in case it wants to pull the mushroom over. Hang on, there we go, because we're crossing her legs, we said, didn't we? If you need to let these set a little bit before we add the rest of the body, that's absolutely fine. If they're still soft, you can obviously push them together and squeeze them in a little bit more at the hip area as well. Okay, that little, that little piece that I put back in is wanting to slide off. I can see the brown sort of colour from the paste if I move it from the area I've stuck it, kind of the brown leaves like a bit of a mark, so I'm just trying to wipe off some of that brown colour. And that's usually the same for some of the darker coloured pastes. Just check you've not misshapen the leg anywhere. Because the legs are pretty firm, if I move them around a lot, or sort of try and bend or unbend that knee, now it's set, it will snap, so I just need to be very careful of that. Okay, so we've got our body we're going to put this onto here. I'm just going to sort of dry up my fingers a little bit on some corn flour. So first of all, I want to hold it against it so I can see how it fits. And you, you can see it doesn't just naturally fit. You have to manoeuvre it a little bit. So we're going to hold the back bit. I'm going to bear with me. A little bit. Now, it is easier if you're wearing clothes because it, either the joints don't matter um, or you can cut pieces off and down, if that makes sense could do is really leave these legs to set actually. But we're gonna pop it on anyway. So I'm gonna try and thin up a little bit at the front and pull it all out to the back. Okay, 
you see how that's going to work there, guys. And I'm going to work out if I want to sit upright or sort of leaning forwards. You know, would she lean back a little bit? Maybe she could lean backwards because then she could cut her arms out and down. Although I think she's quite a way up from the mushroom, so she might not quite reach. What position? Should she be sat upright or... Yeah, laying backwards actually looks a bit weird, doesn't it? So we can put her a bit more upright there. Like I say, if you've got a chance that your legs dry a bit first. So you'll see this will get to the same stage again where that one was at, where I need this to set onto the legs before I can sort of get rid of all the seams and stuff on there. It's just really to show you guys that you can sit them down. I don't know. I'm gonna take out the cocktail stick. I think we're gonna use a wire instead. So I want a fairly thick wire. I want it to go down through her body, but I want it to go into the mushroom a little bit, but I don't want it to come out anywhere that it's not supposed to, so just be careful of that, watch out for it. I'm going to move the neck a little bit further forward like that. So I'm going to push this in fairly near the back. So I'm going to push this down and try and hold those legs when we do it. There we go, I felt that go in. Just checking underneath that that hasn't come out anywhere. I don't think it has. I can't see that it's come out anywhere. Okay, feels like it's on fairly sturdy. And because it's wire, if I do want to lift her up a little bit, I can do. Okay. And don't worry that this is too long for the head at the moment. That's that's not a problem. We can we can change that. Okay, so get that where you want before we start adding any water. Can you see it's starting to kind of take shape a bit there, guys? Hopefully you can. Just trying to put a bit of a dip in her back so that she's less sort of rigid up and down. And if you want to squeeze her taller at this point, you can do. So she's been designed to have a fairly short body, which does look weird when it's only the body and the legs, but when her head goes on, because she's got a fairly large head, head, I can't speak, um, the legs then look more in proportion, so don't fret too much at this stage. Don't forget that once the head goes on, those legs are going to look a bit more in proportion. Okay. Now, I'm going to let her dry, but I really do just want to check that she's not sticking out anywhere that I don't want her to stick out before we let her dry. And like I say, this one then is going to have to dry again. I'm really going to arch that back there. So you can see that sometimes, you know, it's even using a mold, depending on what position and things you're putting them in, you can still spend quite a bit of time sort of perfecting it and getting it how you want it to be. So once that's set, we can fill in the seams down here and bring them so they kind of in line more with the hips so we get a smooth transition rather than stopping and then coming back out to the to the legs. Just checking that that foot is where I want it to be. Okay. I think I'm about happy with that guys. But, uh, sorry, it's one of those things where you end up playing with it for ages. So that's going to dry and set, and then once that's dried and set, I'm just going to fill that in in the same way that I did on that one, and I'll probably have to fill in it, can you see where I took a slice out of it by accident, so that's going to have to be filled in as well, but I'm fairly happy with sort of the position that she's put in there. So it's not a huge dip in her back, but I always feel like I've put quite a big dip in, and that actually by the time I finish it doesn't look that big a dip. And then... Once I've done a head, we stick on the head and then the arms, okay? So this is just what I'm going to show you in the video today. Because I've done a few videos doing the heads and things. I might do some more videos maybe of different styles for the heads and stuff like that, guys. But is that enough for you guys to be um, having a bit of a play around with the moulds and stuff with? Hopefully it is. I hope. Um, and we're probably just in time for the dog to start crying and coming on for his tea. <laughs> So yeah, any questions that you guys have got, I'm just going to put this in the bag because I will need it at some point for the arms. Do you want to bring your other fairy into the screen as well? Your head which on the one? Which one? The one you've just got to Yeah, yeah. Just put that away in there. 
Because if this skin colour dries up because I made this skin colour, I won't be able to match it. Again, if I try to remake it, I'll end up with it slightly different. So. That's it. And if you don't like doing the legs, you know, just make a doll cake where she doesn't need legs. You see, she did have wings at one point that I pulled out. In fact, these are her wings. Did anybody have any questions, Richard? I'm just going to look at the second point. Yeah. And it is so difficult to tell that, like, you know, when they are partially built because you just think, oh, it's not right, it's not right. It's only really when the head and the arms and everything are on that it starts coming together. So, you know, don't fret too much, like, say, if you've just got one that's not fully finished. But, yeah, she's looking a bit smoother now as well, now that she's finished. Whereas, you know, before, she was a bit sort of lumpy-bumpy and you could really see all the joins and where I'd put it together. So I'm a bit happy now. And she's a bit bland, but that's because there's not really much going on in this sort of grass area. So I would probably add some ferns or grass and flowers and stuff just to really make that look a bit more like a pretty scene that's that's going on there. Did you say there were any questions? Richard? I am um, looking, there's been too many. I mean, Emily's been answering this years ago along. Fantastic. Um, Candice, I think, joined a little bit later. She wanted to double check if you're using modeling chocolate, but obviously using So we're using, yeah, we're using the Saracino paste, which I stupidly left out and packs on here as well. And pretty much melted them. Uh, yeah, so the Saracino paste, which contains the cocoa butter, which is why it's getting very soft when it's when it's a bit warm for me. The first part, I um, well, actually, I did it off camera, but I, I added quite a bit of CMC and Tylos. Or I can't remember if CMC or Tylos. They both do the same thing. I can't remember which one it was I used. I usually have a pot of both on the go. Um, to it just so it firmed up a bit quicker with it being warm weather. If you quick, you quick. I guess it, a lot of it's modeling mediums, because obviously, People can't get Saracino everywhere. Fondant, I mean, could they try with fondant? Yeah, I mean, I personally hate using fondant for modeling and I don't think I could get it to work in the mold because, again, you, I'd seen the entire and you're probably thinking, well, what's the difference? Because I added it to this. But it, I add a lot of it to the fondant and then I end up with it trying and cracking. So I probably put too much in the fondant, which is why it doesn't work for me. And then I just find it really difficult to work with. But I know there's a lot of people that only use fondant for models. Um, I just, I think it would be harder to get it out of the mould for the really thin parts like the arms and stuff. Like, it depends what you're used to as well. If it's something that you model with yeah, previously. Yeah, like I said, because I don't use it. I probably am worse with the fondant than those of you guys that do use fondant all the time. You can use like flour and modelling paste. So like your gum paste is, is fine to use in it. And you can, if you're struggling to get bits out, you know, you can put them in the fridge for five, ten minutes with your paste in, just enough they go to firm and then get it out. But don't leave it in there so long that it gets condensation on because then it get really sticky and instead of coming out your mould, it'll stick to it. Or you'll get it out your mould and then when you try to put it together, it'll get really wet and sticky because of the condensation and it'll just be a bit messy. Yeah. Cool. Uh, are you going to be getting male bodies to go with the male faces? Yes. They are in development at the moment, yes, aren't they? They are, yes. And I've done a new male face as well because I did the the like excuse the state of this one, it's just like in polymer clay, so that I knew for my sizing. So this was the very first original face mold that we did, which you see is quite a bit bigger than this one we're using at the moment with this. So this is the one that belongs with this. This was the original one. So she's gonna have a body because at the moment she doesn't have a body because it's a big body, so that's why I never made her one, but I am gonna make her one. Um, and the male mold called Johnny was the face that went with her, but he maybe is just a tad on the small side. So I've made a new male face now that's a little bit bigger than this one. I mean, they do make big figures to these, well, depending on the size of the bodies, but that way you've got the option as well. And then you've got um, the new male bodies as well that are coming. It'd be a little while before they arrive, but I have pretty much made the bodies at my end, if that makes sense. Yeah. As long as I don't break them this time like I did last time. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, da, 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 da. Hello from Dubai. Kisses from Colombia. Oh, thank da, you, everybody, da, da. wherever you are. Hello from Turkey. Hello in Turkey. So I'm just, I'm just scrolling through, okay, scrolling through the messages. comments that may <laughs> If we missed any messages, guys, or any questions that you asked and I haven't answered it and Richard's not seen it, feel free to ask it again then it'll come to the top of the pile or bottom of the pile but is it easier for you to find it than if you've missed it Richard? Yeah yeah if you go to the bottom of, yeah yeah if you do it if you do your question quick now it'll 
appear at the bottom of, of it, which is good for me. Mm -hmm. uh, just to recap, yeah, once we finish this live, it will be available back on our page to watch at your yes, leisure. Be, yeah. uh, da, da, da. See, um, when we get to this point, I should really have a little laptop so I can read the queries myself, shouldn't I? I know. We've got no space for them there. No. Uh, Chantal uh, says she's bought the gem mould but misplaced the face. Can she buy a replacement face? Yeah, yeah. We, we sell them both individually as well now. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so you can, you can just buy a, a face, yeah. <laughs> and you know that you'll find it as soon as you buy one. <laughs> yeah, just like Zoe does that. Zoe goes <laughs> onto the shop floor to take stuff off, then she finds what she's been missing, yeah, don't you, Zoe? So they have ten of the same item, yeah. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Which is the favourite mould you have that you that you created? This one. The original one? Yeah, the big original one. I haven't got the... Yeah, I... I it's easier the bigger it is to work on it, but obviously that's not always ideal if you're doing customer cakes because the bigger the figure is, you know, they're just big. Sometimes you don't want anything massive on the cakes. It depends on the size of the cake, but I that one was my favourite one, the original one. I just feel like because it's bigger, I can do a lot more with it, whereas the small one, there's only so much I can do with the face just because it starts getting a bit fiddly. But yeah, that's that's my favourite one. Okay. <laughs> That one in the mail, the mail one that's called Johnny, that I wish I'd called something else. <laughs> um, weirdly though, that is probably the least popular face mold with you guys, is the one that's called Johnny. I named him after Johnny Bravo. Because of big chin. Yeah, because of his big jaw. So that, that is my favourite one, but yeah. Everybody has different opinions, I guess. Any more questions? Uh, a few shipping queries. We are in the process of getting set up to ship into Europe. Fingers crossed. I am confident that will be toward the back end of this week. Cause so we had a meeting last week about it. Um, with what we need to do to get it all in place and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I've been doing that this weekend as well. So we should be up and running, fingers crossed, back end of this week. Um, like, as someone's mentioned about Canada, we already shipped to Canada, so it should... Um, the only issues we've we got was some. Most countries. Yeah, the only query. Apart from at the moment, EU, but hopefully that should be sorted soon. Sometimes, if the shipping doesn't work to certain countries, maybe because of the weight of the parcel. Yeah. Because yeah, we have so. to get individual shipping quotes if it's too heavy or. Yeah, sometimes you know if you guys buy the the cutting board that I work on because the class is quite a large item. Our system can't calculate the postage just, cost automatically. Yeah. So instead of just telling you that, the website just tells you that we don't ship to the country. So if ever you're not sure, just message us. Because if you screenshot what's in your basket, we can um, manually calculate and get different shipping yeah, costs. Yeah, give you a few options, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And then that way you can see which shipping company you prefer and which sort of cost option is best for you for posting. Uh, thank you to everybody that sent us stars. I forgot you oh, get stars on Facebook. Oh, some stars. We have some, we got some stars, oh, thank yeah. thank you guys. For anyone who doesn't know, stars are like, you, you, it's like... Well, it's a little bit of money, isn't it, for doing yeah, Facebook? Yeah, yeah, I think like, you send influencers and creators stars if you're enjoying their videos as a way of yeah. i guess showing your appreciation but you don't have to send them guys but i mean i do appreciate when you do but you don't have to but thank you to those of you that do yeah uh suzanne would love a mushroom 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 tutorial yeah i like that one and it's quite easy i feel like i need to make loads of them a little fairy garden but with loads of little mushrooms and toadstools in uh, Patricia says, hello, good day, I see you from Argentina, you are a genius. No, oh, thanks. <laughs> I'm not sure anybody else thinks of me as a genius, but well, certainly not that knows me. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think that's it. Uh, but thank you. Tangine, she loves Johnny, the mould. Yeah, I do, I like that one. But yeah, I think, uh, I can't see too many more. Oh, thank you. <laughs> We've just got some more stars. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It wasn't a hint that we wanted stars, by the way, but thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, basically when you send stars, we make a little bit of money off the stars. Yeah, so it's always appreciated. Goes for my, towards my Lego collection. Which is not having the star money to pay for himself some more Lego. <laughs> buy some Lego every week. Right, I think I think that is, is good. That is good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, brilliant. Right, I shall. I'm going to concentrate tonight on maybe making some different molds as well. Maybe some new, some new molds that I have in mind, guys. If you guys find moulds useful, I know that some people love using moulds and then some people won't use moulds at all. Like, I'm not actually a big user of moulds in general, but then when I've been wanting to practice, like, I don't know, say, like, you know, like different Halloween faces and stuff, it was quick and easy for me to use that big mould. 
And I was like, yeah, because I'm just getting the same standard thing every time. And then I'd got the time to play around with changing it, but this bit was quick, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm mean, definitely using them a lot more now than I used to, I would say. I mean, they're good for if you are doing customer cakes and you need to do things quicker. Definitely. Well, yeah, because that time is money when you're doing that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Or, so or if you just, you know, if you either don't enjoy making them by hand or you struggle a little bit making so them. So they're also used for those repetitive things where if you're doing the same thing. Yeah, over, but that's it. If you're making over. a lot of the same thing, then the, yeah, they are ideal. I remember having to use your pearl bead molds. Yeah, um, yeah, where we've had to cover four wedding cakes in pearls. Yeah. <laughs> and before production, I had lots of pearl molds on the go for that. Um, <laughs> The one thing I would say is if you're entering like a competition or something, probably don't use the moulds. Like, I mean, it's nice to see people use them in that I'm flattered that people use them for competitions, but if you use them for like a competition for CI or something, um, you might get marked down for using a mould. Like you would always, in a competition setting, get more marks for doing everything freehand. So, you know, if that's the case, don't use the moulds for that, guys. Anyway, I should let you get off because I'm rambling again, aren't I? Uh, Sean... Chantelle's just said she's um, difficulties with the nose in the moles. I think that was. Did you go through that in the video part yes, one? Yes, in you? part one, yeah. I've lost my little scrap that I pushed into the end. So they only have very small noses anyway. So, like, even on the bigger one, you can see that the nose is very small. Um, so, can you see from. I don't know if I've got that too much. Oh, far away. Like down about. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, that's good. Um, so they are only very small, but you really do have to push right into into here. So when you put the paste in, really push your finger in. But if the paste is sticking to you, when you pull your finger out, it lifts it out again. And then when it pushes back in, it goes in a different place and reflattens it. Also, do not sort of touch this area at all because that flattens it straight out if you touch the mould at the front. Um, it is a chance I would have a look at part one because I do sort of talk a bit more about it there. It can be quite tricky, sort of. But once you once you've got it, and you think, yeah, that's it. I've done it now. It becomes easier because you know how firm you have to press and stuff each time. Um, but yeah, yeah. Have a have a watch pad, pad. <laughs> No, cool. Right, I think we are good. Okay, cool guys. I will. Um, I'll finish this at some point. I probably won't do it in the live. I'll get it finished and then I'll start because it'll be some kind of ways of doing that one. Um, and then yeah, it'll all, we'll put the two parts together. They'll all be available on the Facebook page once this is once we go offline anyway. And then I'll put them over on the YouTube channel as well. And I'll take some nice pictures and show you. Right, thank you ever so much for joining us, guys. Have a lovely evening or morning or afternoon, wherever you are. See you later. Bye.